so it's just a two second <laughs> we get a big <laughs> just I, I hate it I hate it but we had our okay. it was my favorite well, it's 7 o'clock. I actually watched. Welcome you all to the Milton City Hall. And I'm going to call the meeting of the Milton Plan Commission for Tuesday, May 22nd, 2018, to order. So the first item is the roll call. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Paulson? Here. Hubbard? Here. Barr? Here. Ramsey? Here. 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 All right. So we have two new plan commission members and we're gonna give them a chance to say a few words about themselves and we're gonna start with uh, Commissioner Murray. Thank you, I'm Jennifer Murray. I've lived in Middleton four years. My experience is in uh, transportation planning and I have a master's degree in architecture and I'm really interested in helping the city achieve its vision for the future here. Um, I've got two young kids here in the school system and um, I'm really happy to be here, so thank you. And you have an AICP certification? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Wayne. Thank you. Um, my name is Wayne Ferdihert. Forget about the P and the rest is phonetic. <laughs> <laughs> um, lived in Middleton for 27 years. <clears throat> um, initially living just a block from here in the historic uh, Wolf home. Um, three years ago into the new community of Bishop's Bay. Um, my background um, has been a combination of engineering and planning. Um, started in water resources planning with the Corps of Engineers, then did energy planning with Argonne National Laboratory, um, then in consulting and solid uh, waste management, and most recently for the last 20 plus years I've been at the university uh, leading uh, online graduate education for engineers there. Uh, really looking forward to um, contributing to the fine tradition of planning here in Middleton. Thank you for the opportunity to serve. And Wayne is also American Institute of Certified Planners certified. Yes, uh, All right. although my, my certification here is not current. It, um, <gasps> oh, you would work oh, on it. Oh, <laughs> right, you, you, didn't, you didn't take those CM credits. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I do have my professional engineering license as well. Okay, well, that's good. Which is a step down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we can debate that later. Uh -oh. it, it goes RLA, AICT, PE, right? Yeah, okay. exactly. <laughs> okay, so the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. So moved. Second. The motion is to approve the minutes. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes. It's not 7.05 yet. Can we, so, mm -hmm. can we move items 10 and 11? Okay, let's go uh, to item number 10. I would move to set a hearing uh, request for rezoning Redtail Acres subdivision. Um, to June 26th. When was it? When was it? <laughs> 26. Um, June 26th at 7.05. Second. At the public hearing. Okay. Do we, any questions or any discussions? The only, thing, the only thing I would say is um, I have a commitment to speak at an engineering conference in Utah that evening, so I won't be able to attend. Okay, that's all right. Okay, all those in favor of the motion to set the hearing date for a public hearing for the Red Tail Acre subdivision say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes. So the second. Next item number 11 is set a public hearing request for conditional use permit for 360 Athletics LLC Holly Pass Street 1554 Cynthia Street. So I'll move that we set a public hearing for June 12th at 7.05. Okay. Any discussion? Second. Okay, all right. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes unanimously. It, is there so a let's go to the, item number can 12. Can I just ask, is there a reason the Red Tail Acres is June 26th, not June 12th? Yes, because we have to have annexation first. Okay. And so that makes um, sense. It's, it's going through the Department of Administration Dealing. right now. But one of the things <coughs> you could potentially do is number eight. That might go. Number eight? Number okay. Eight goes. All right. 
Okay, number eight, specific implementation plan modification for deck enlargement, Woodland Points, Starter 3017, Woodland Trail. And the applicants are here in the architect field, <coughs> and the staff recommendation is approval. Um, this, the building envelopes have worked very well for almost 30 years. They've preserved the trees, and they're extending the deck slightly. I <coughs> I'll, I'll move approval as a minor SIP. Okay. Second. Any questions or discussions? It is just the deck. Just mm. the deck, right? Yeah. And you have some questions? <coughs> okay, otherwise, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes unanimously. You guys can go and celebrate now, so. <laughs> Enjoy the show. All right. It's a beautiful weather, so. Okay, so now it's 7.05, oh, 7.06, so, so I'm going to open the public hearing, which is the request for conditional use permit for Abra Auto Body Shop Repair of America, 8026 Versithia Street. Anybody who wants to speak in favor or against it, this is the time to speak. This is the public hearing for the conditional use permit for the Abra Auto Body Repair of America. No takers. Okay, all right, I'm gonna close uh, that part of the public hearing and then we move on to, is there any particular item you want to take? Um, yeah, just go with that. Just go with that. We can go with the agenda. Okay, let's move on to dive into item number two. It's not very controversial in any case, right? So it's uh, <laughs> okay. This is the request for increased developer finance tax incremental district theory assistance for the Milton Center, phase one seven five zero seven Hubbard Avenue and eight one. 1818 Parliamentary Street. Eileen, you want to take it or uh, Abby? Or? Yep, um, so there was a memo included in your packet. Yeah. I'll just kind of go through the um, main points that our staff made in the mem memo. Um, this is a recommendation coming from our TIF staff, um, which is Eileen, me, and Bill Burns, our finance director. Um, so we've been discussing this request with T Wall Enterprises um, for. Um, quite some time now. This is a request for an additional $1,066,000 in developer finance TIP assistance um, to complete the build out for phase one of Middleton Center. So the first two buildings that are now constructed um, here in our downtown um, have, you know, as you've probably noticed, the retail spaces on the ground floor are still vacant. Um, there are some vacant office spaces in the upper levels as well. <coughs> And um, so, so this would be a request to help with the build out of those spaces. Um, in June of 2016, the city approved a TIF agreement for just over $10 million in developer finance TIF assistance for this project. That includes principal and interest for all three phases. And at the time that the city made that recommendation, the understanding was 100% of the TIF increment would go back to support the project. So um, that estimate for just over 10 million in TIF assistance was made um, with a different understanding of where the assessed value um, could potentially come in for the project. It was based on the pro forma that was provided to the city by the developer. And that pro forma, we learned later, after the, the development agreement was approved, did not in include um, a line item for CAM or common area maintenance. Um, whether it's common for a pro forma to include CAM or not is um, <coughs> sort of up in the air, but the expenses related to common area maintenance were included in the pro forma. So it's like you should either leave them both out or you should include them both. So the argument that um, you know, T-Wall Enterprises made is you know, we underestimated the, uh, the final assessed value for this project. Now we would like to come back and get that additional TIF assistance so that we are indeed getting 100% of the TIF increment that's being generated by the project. Um, our staff's opinion was we cannot do this for phase one because phase one is already constructed and we were very concerned that it wouldn't meet the but for test. And that I think would, would remain our number one concern about this TIF request is that, you know, 
state, um, the Wisconsin state law says that um, a project has to meet the but for TIF, meaning this development would not occur but for the use of TIF. And given that the phase one of Middleton Center was already constructed, we felt it would be a hard case to make. Um, at the time, they were also requesting a dif additional TIF assistance for phase two of Middleton Center, which was not constructed. And so our staff did make the recommendation that the additional um, TIF assistance for phase two should be granted and the council approved that recommendation. Um, so now um, they're coming back again and saying, you know, this is really difficult for us to fill these spaces and um, also costs are increasing substantially. And we completely understand that. We've been hearing that from pretty much every developer who's doing a project right now that costs, construction costs are up significantly and it's very difficult. Um, so where we're at now is, you know, essentially our staff is not supportive still of this request, although we, you know, we respect the opinion of t -Wall Enterprises. We, we love the way that the development has turned out. You know, we, we just don't think that this is the right move for the city. And, you know, typically what happens is if, if a project generates more increment than what was initially anticipated, that's good for the city because then that goes to the general TIF which helps to support other projects in the TIF. And you know, one such project in TIF 3 that could use that additional increment, if there is additional increment, is the downtown plaza, which you know, the city recently acquired um, at a cost of $1.2 million. And we still have yet to find out what the cost to improve that plaza are going to be. So you know, I think our thought was, you know, we f well, we feel bad that initially we, it was meant to be 100% and now the assessed value may come in higher, um, but that's good for the city because then that can go to the general benefit of TIF 3 and there are a lot of other projects that the city wants to complete in TIF 3. So, um, you know, T-Wall Enterprises is working with some excellent tenants that would be great for the downtown. So we know, you know, we know all of the retail tenants. They're fantastic. They would really be a great draw for the downtown. We also know one of the office tenants who's represented here tonight and had a letter included in your packet and they would be a fantastic office tenant, bring a lot of good jobs to the downtown. Um, so, you know, this is, this is kind of a tough predicament and I know that Terrence would like to um, speak on this request. Um, what this boils down to for us, we, we broke this up into two separate um, parts. One being the request for the build out shortfall to support the retail uses and um, our recommendation for that is denial. And that, the reason for that is that we were concerned about the but for test. Um, construction costs are increasing on all projects, so we didn't feel that these additional costs would qualify as extraordinary costs. Um, also, the city does not provide direct TIF assistance to retailers, of which there are many competitors in the downtown. Um, one that immediately comes to mind is right across the street from Parmenter, and he's in the process of building out his retail space right now for a uh, men's um, clothing store. N no TIF assistance was provided to that project. Um, and that this will set a precedent where other developers may request TIF assistance for tenant buildouts, um, which we have not done. And then part two was the request for build out shortfall assistance to support the office uses. And um, we're not recommending support for this. And um, I wouldn't say that we're as strong as saying we would recommend denial, but we're not recommending support. And uh, again, <coughs> the same concerns, one, the first one being the but for test. Second um, concern that it wouldn't qualify as extraordinary. The third is that we were concerned that it would set a precedent um, for requesting assistance for other tenant build outs. If the plan commission um, and or the council determine that there is an interest in pursuing this for the office, we would recommend a different calculation for the build out shortfall. And also um, we would recommend that if you decide to go down this road um, and pursue this, that you might wanna consider um, requesting staff to develop some sort of criteria so that you know there are I think four vacant office spaces and we know the tenant for one, but would there be some kind of criteria we should establish so that every tenant
coming into those to fill those office spaces doesn't have to come before the planning commission and council to receive assistance. Questions to Abby before we ask Terence. Abby, is there any additional criteria in the TIF with this developer right now in terms of um, what they're providing for the city? You mean cri additional criteria that was included in the original um, agreement. TIF agreement? Mm -hmm. um, I believe that all of the criteria in the TIF agreement thus far have been satisfied. So, um, you know, phase one is complete, phase two is under construction, and the TIF agreement is written such that e each phase can stand alone, but overall the amount of assistance being provided is just over 10 million. And I think that everything in the agreement, you know, is has been satisfied and, you know, we're very happy with the way that the project has turned out. Does the, oh, this is really loud, I'm sorry. Does the developer's agreement say uh, 10.8 million or does it say 100%? It says 10.8. There's, yeah, okay. there's a cap. Yeah, there's so even though it's, I mean, okay. Or it might, it might the cap might be 8 point something plus the interest. Yep. That might be the, there might not be a cap on that, but it, there's a range. But the developer there, agreement a has a cap on the yeah. total amount. Yeah. Okay. Now, Abby, one of the points which was made was that uh, the apartments are ready to rent. So this space is not. So, so, and this, the expense to prepare it to be able to rent, does that make any sense in terms of argument or not? Um, I mean, I guess, like I said, our opinion is no, um, mm -hmm. because the project is substantially completed, but I'm sure that Terrence has a different opinion and would I'm sure like to make his case as well. Terrence, let's hear from you. <laughs> I think we need to turn on this mic. Thank you. Uh, that was a very good, uh, a very good summary, actually. Thank you, Abby. Uh, so first, I just want to apologize uh, for being myself. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, Seriously, the, yeah, you're getting that on the record there, Van? So, um, no, I do want to apologize in the sense of uh, the original pro forma is an estimate, and they did, uh, in the pro forma, we did miss the CAM uh, as a revenue item, and uh, the contract with the city does call for 100% of, of TAFE increment. Uh, but the bottom line is that you've got to decide uh, if you want downtown Middleton to be successful. That's really the bottom line question. Um, costs have skyrocketed. Uh, Middleton Center is not like any other development anywhere in, in anywhere in Middleton or the west side of Madison because we have extraordinary costs, you know, 100 foot deep pilings. We have 400 of them. You know, we had to rebuild public roads. We had to do the shoring, the environmental contamination of the railroad. You know, I could go on and on with all of the unique costs that are uh, unique to this location in downtown that are not incurred in a greenfield site, even blocks from here. And Terrence, those are TIF eligible and have received reimbursement through TIF? Yes, but we have, uh, correct me, Taylor, we had like $2.5 million of TIF eligible costs that um, we did not receive. Is that correct, Eileen? Something like that. So we had this extra, we did not receive anything on uh, in terms of assistance. Uh, because you can't so go above 100% of that increment. Right, right. Uh, but now we know we're short. So, uh, But you know, really the bottom line is, um, you know, let me tell you about what's happening downtown in, 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 in retail environment and obviously the uh, construction environment. Um, the, uh, uh, what we're trying to do is develop a cluster here uh, downtown. We've got a number of, of clothing stores and other good retailers and the office users, of course, but create a cluster that will help downtown. Uh, for example, you know, it's public knowledge that the store, Nina, is closing. You know, I feel that had we had these spaces leased already, that store probably wouldn't be closing. Uh, there wouldn't have been turnover in the other store next to it either. Um, so there's been consistent turnover, and Middleton Center is your downtown anchor. And if we're successful, Middleton Center is successful, downtown will be successful. Vacant storefronts and vacant office space do not help downtown. Uh, nothing like that is gonna be helpful uh, to the city. You gotta have a strong core. 
So we've got an insurance agency. Am I talking too close to the? Okay. We've got an insurance agency that um, 25 employees are going to be hiring up to maybe another 25 that wants to be here. We have an elder care uh, employees up to 400 employees uh, since moving to Middleton. Uh, in fact, that that is located in the property that the city is purchasing. So uh, providing some assistance to us helps the city because we're helping. Uh, relocate that business uh, which is going to need to relocate and they'll tell you the story of how they have uh, <coughs> went out in the marketplace and they can't you know they're at half the rent or less compared to everything they find in the marketplace and the tenant improvement costs are significantly over what they can afford as a business you know these are small businesses they're they're competing you know the retailers in particular are competing with Amazon right online uh, it's very difficult uh, we have a local entertainment company that could, if they come here with, and we get the TIF to help them, uh, they'll bring 60 uh, managerial level uh, jobs here. Um, we a uh, home furnishing store uh, with uh, uh, an entrepreneur um, who will bring in uh, lots of customers. A woman's boutique who uh, brings in groups of people uh, as part of their store sales program. Uh, so they'll be bringing in a lot of customers in groups. A men's clothing store with a person who worked at uh, a major national uh, clothing retailer experience. It's a startup. Again, these are either startups or have been open for uh, you know a few years. Uh, possible cafe. Four of these, by the way, have uh, we've signed leases subject to uh, getting TIF. So uh, we will lose them if we don't receive the TIF, and here's why. Um, we used to be able to do a build out for twenty-five dollars per square foot. And that was standard. The exception would be if you were a law firm or a bank, you might spend $45 a foot, right? But the, the basic standard was $25 a foot that we could do a build-out for. We've gotten bids back now, and they're $65 to $70 a foot. And that's because of the two hurricanes, the labor shortage, the construction material shortage, and the threat of these tariffs. You know, we saw a 30% increase in lumber. We've seen, seen steel prices jump skyrocket with the threat of the tariffs. Uh, you know. Contractors don't want to spend, you know, time building out a thousand square foot store, you know, or a two thousand square foot store. They want to build a bigger building, right? So the cost per square foot is very high uh, to do that, and these tenants can't afford it. We've helped by lowering the rents, so we're gonna not do very well in that <coughs> sense. But uh, we don't have any extra funds to help them on the tenant improvement dollars, uh, and they certainly can't afford it as a small business. Uh, so keep in mind, these are not city taxpayer dollars. These are developer dollars, developer finance TIF. So we're the one at risk. Um, we're the ones that would be securing the extra funds from a local bank. Um, and what we really need is your help to make sure that Middleton Center is successful. And we're not coming to you here a month after, you know, we open the building. We've been trying to lease this space for almost two years. Two years. We've called over 500 possible tenants. We've uh, brought in uh, tenants who actually came here and then grabbed an open storefront down on University Avenue. Um, but, you know, instead of coming to our building because the costs were higher. We lost pet the owner of Pasquale's, if you recall. We had a signed lease with a contingency. and They were not able to open because they bid out right after the hurricanes and their, their costs were enormous uh, for them, especially a restaurant. A restaurant build out might take 150 to $200 per foot because of the plumbing and the, and the venting and the uh, kitchen equipment. Um, so we have some really high extraordinary costs due to this location compared to any place else in Middleton. We have the uh, extraordinary costs of the skyrocketing uh, materials and labor in the construction industry. Um, and we've really been at this for a long time and, and now we have, we took a different tact with, you know, we lost a lot of prospective tenants uh, you know, when we talked about the rent or the tenant improvement costs, now we, in the last two months, we've taken a different tact uh, and we're able to get these leases signed with contingency for TIF is to say, you know, if we get this help on the TIs, we'll lower the rent, we'll try to get a package together that will work, we're contributing, can the city let us go out and finance some additional TIF dollars that we're entitled to 100% of TIF increment anyway under our agreement. Um, so just want to emphasize that it's really important for the success of this building and also the success of downtown that um, this uh, these additional TIF funds be secured. Um, you know, we
Um, so anyways, I'm, I'm done, but I want to introduce also uh, Taylor, uh, our legal beagles, just got a few points here, and then um, I want to introduce that. Uh, Can I ask you a question? Just so I understand, the building had extraordinary costs because of the school, and that's TIF eligible. But the tenant improvements costs are high everywhere. They're not extraordinary to this building, correct? Um, so the tenant improvement costs are uh, is a recent phenomena, um, and I don't know about any other buildings. I imagine. Even a small thousand square feet or two thousand square foot build out is going to require that contract planning, just in time delivery, off site storage, additional management, um, and that's really the cost. If you have a, if you have a, uh, uh, if you have a superintendent uh, build out a two thousand square foot space, um, that cost per square foot is very high, right? So, what we've done. So yes, I mean, we do have extraordinary costs, but you won't incur if you're doing the exact same build out over in a Greenfield location that you have plenty of room to spread out and plenty of contractor parking for their labor pool, et cetera. But that's not the full difference between 25 a square foot and 65 no, right, a square foot. Right, right, yeah, yes, I said that yeah. the, I think the other location would be more expensive also. And how would you, how would you respond to uh, retail across the street that says, we didn't get any TIF subsidy for our mm -hmm. retail, and now you're subsidizing a competitor. Uh, so that's a good question. One is, um, uh, I've been around a little longer than maybe some others. Uh, uh, there was retail or TIF provided to uh, uh, Mustard Museum, which is local retail right across the street. But those other storefronts there have a lower cost, so they were built at a different cost structure at a different time, much lower cost structure. Than we're incurring today, and so they don't have uh, they don't have the cost structure that we're incurring. Um, and when you recycle a space, like we try to do this, right? When we uh, have a second generation tenant, we try to save. You know, you're not you're not tearing out the ceiling, you're not tearing out the walls. You know, maybe you're doing some paint, maybe you're patching some carpet or something like that. But you're recycling. You know, you're not tearing out the bathroom, which is one of the bigger costs of a small tenant space. It's the plumbing. So there's some significant savings when you're in the second you know, generation tenant or third generation tenant, like they are across the street compared to the first generation. So there's a big difference there. Other questions for Terrence? Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to further, <coughs> further Terrence's points. Um, you know, again, just a reminder that this is developer finance tip, so we have to go out and get a loan based on this, so the city doesn't incur a cost in that. Um, also, you know, in looking at Abby's memo, which again, great job, um, you know, the TIF eligible expenses weren't covered in there, but um, Terrence did cover that, but uh, sorry, by Abby's admission, the finance director and city assessor say that our project's worth $5.2 million more than was in originally estimated. And again, that was kind of a, the cost came back higher, and so, you know, that was found through construction. The pilings, a lot of that stuff for the, the ground conditions couldn't have been known until we started construction. But um, further, we have a letter that we sent to, to Bill earlier today and been working on it with Abby earlier, but our attorneys at Hush Blackwell have prepared a memorandum explaining that in their opinion, the but-for test could be satisfied because there is no occupancy permit for these first generation spaces. They're, you know, gray box, you know, unlike, 
um, the spaces across the street. Uh, also want to emphasize too with TIF, I think it's a case by case basis. I, I don't think we're setting a precedence here. Um, you know, in this circumstance, we had $2.2 million of TIF eligible expenses that were found in the construction process. We have additional increment that justifies at least a million dollars in extra TIF. Um, and then, you know, the but for test, I believe, can be satisfied because the commercial space has not been constructed yet. Um, and then one more thing to finish off is that, uh, that Terrence you know, didn't highlight as well is, you know, without these retailers, there's not going to be these office tenants. The, the retailers are the drivers. Um, so that's been kind of the, the difficulty for us is that we can't get the retailers here, even with us cutting rents as much as we are because of the build out cost being so high. Um, and then finally, just want to close on, you know, phase three can't be financed if phase one is not leased up. So this proposes a bigger problem for the downtown than just phase one and the retail generation that, that uh, is being done there. Any questions, Cardella? I just want to introduce uh, Michael Smith, uh, one of the prospective office uh, businesses, employers that would be coming with jobs here. Thanks, Terrence, and thanks, Council. I appreciate it. Good evening. Um, my name is Michael Smith. I run an insurance uh, agency. Um, I am uh, certainly appreciative of this conversation tonight. Uh, I have the opportunity to uh, re relocate and bring 25 folks that um, work on my team. Uh, their, their average income is um, into the six figures. Um, we are in a business of entertaining and wooing clients. I in a sense, we utilize um, restaurants, um, we utilize facilities in the community. Uh, we work very well with uh, chambers and very active with the communities that we're in. Um, we're very attracted to the uh, Middleton uh, downtown Middleton specifically uh, area because of uh, some of the facilities that are here. Um, the gap that is um, occurring with the build out is my concern economically. Um, I can be anywhere west of uh, the Capitol building and it could be in downtown uh, Madison, it could be in Fitchburg, it could be anywhere I want to put my office. Um, this is by far the most appealing um, from the general outset of uh, an operation. And so um, the money that we spend as a group is uh, something that's palatable, I believe, to the businesses. Um, I, I know there's retail here and there's more slated to come in. Um, we shop in our communities, we support our communities that we work in, and um, I feel like it would be the right place for our team to spend our money. It is. Um, a place where a lot of economics happen in um, the Madison area. I'm very well aware of that. There's a lot of mover and shakers that are in this community that attracts us as well. Um, but yet, at the end of the day, it, it comes down to the initial getting into the space and making it work financially for us. So um, I don't know if you guys have any questions. I'd be happy to field yes, them. Yes, Yeah. Where would you be relocating from? Um, our office is over in Sun Prairie. We are, we'll keep a, a, a kiosk over there. Um, however, um, the lion's share of our growth will happen over here. Yes, David. T Taren said that you have, or said that he has signed contracts subject to financing. Uh, do you have a contract with Taren subject to the financing from this TIF? Um, we have uh, entered into a, um, an agreement that if this TIF does happen, we will occupy the space. If not, we have to reconsider probably. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And, and it, it's, I'm in sales. That's not a sales pitch. It's kind of the reality of it. Yeah. Any would, other would, questions? Um, so here's our qualm. Mm -hmm. He's using TIF to, in essence, coach an employer from one city to another city in the county. Might be good for us, but it's kind of a zero sum because it'd be Sun Prairie's loss. So where we've helped with relocations before is when uh, companies have scattered sites and they need one site or they're expanding and can't expand in their current location. But mm -hmm. 
um, it, it always gives us some pause to just move one firm from one city to another city. Right, and Kurt, I, I can address that by saying we have a facility in Platteville currently that's staying there. We have a facility in Sun Prairie. We're just downsizing it, um, and, and we'll, we'll our, our, we need presence on the east side of town, zero question. Um, but if you say our flagship, per se, um, would be here. Um, we also have folks that um, don't utilize the space because it's not up to speed in Sun Prairie. Um, in other words, the facility's not functional enough to support as many people as we have on a daily basis. That's part of our issue as well. So uh, ultimately we have to expand from that space regardless. Um, okay, so I don't know if that answers that, your that, question. That, that, helps, yeah. that helps council too to understand. Sure. Because there's a general agreement amongst all the cities. You don't, you don't poach. But Great if people integrity. are looking to expand yeah. and there's no room to expand in your existing facility. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? I have a um, question for you. Yeah, go ahead. Abby, um, in your analysis, um, you had indicated, so there's a, there's a, um, a bullet point applied to retail but not office, th and that is that <coughs> right. TIF has not been used for retail. Can you explain the, press, the extent to which TIF has been used for office? Yes. Um, so a typical office TIF agreement would be for a brand new um, office building. So to give you an example, High Sight is locating in Middleton at the southwest corner of Airport and Pleasant View Road. They're building a 90,000 square foot office and they have a lot of extraordinary costs related to their <coughs> development, including poor soils, underground parking, you know, clearly things that the city has, has incentivized in the past as extraordinary costs. The reason that our staff was not quite as vehement on our recommendation about the office space is that there is a provision within our TIF project plan that allows for the city to provide TIF assistance as economic development incentives. And there have been a couple of companies, um, for example, WTS Paradigm was one of the companies, and I believe um, the VA, um, the Veterans Health Administration was also an, uh, an economic development incentive uh, TIF project where, you know, there is some dollar amount that's placed on the value of the job that's coming into the city. Um, those economic <coughs> development incentives have typically been a much lower dollar amount. Um, so, you know, depending on the project, it might be, you know, two hundred or three hundred thousand dollars. Like I think High Sight received um, about three hundred thousand for three hundred employees. Um, but that we, what we did with the High Sight project is we just provided assistance for the newly created jobs. So High Sight is consolidating. They've got space now in Fitchburg and Middleton and in Madison and they're consolidating into like a corporate headquarters um, but they're bringing 250 jobs that already exist in Fitchburg so the city is not providing a TIF incentive for those jobs because they already exist in the county. There are 50 new jobs that they plan to create in the first two years and so the city was providing um, TIF assistance as economic development incentives for those 50 new jobs and that includes a clawback provision. So that requires the city annually to get the, the total number of um, full-time equivalent employees and, and you know, certify whether they're, they're indeed there, what their pay is, you know, those kinds of things. It's, it's a much less used provision within the TIF um, project plan and you know, we, we did mention to T Wall that if the city were to provide assistance here, our staff's recommendation would be that it would be related to the office tenants and that it um, be in the form of economic development incentives. Um, but when we learned about the jobs that were coming here, we weren't really looking at a lot of newly created jobs. And so we really didn't feel that, um, at least with this one, you know, this one office tenant that they're proposing that there would really be much in the way of, you know, new, newly created jobs that the city would incentivize. 
But they will be new to Middleton, right? New to Middleton, yeah. Yep. And, I mean, even if there were, you know, five to ten new jobs, when you look <coughs> at the amount of assistance that the city has provided on economic development assistance, it wouldn't come anywhere near the dollar amount that's being requested. Thank you. That's a very helpful explanation. Okay. Any As questions? Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, go ahead. But you have questions, Kurt? You have questions? <coughs> yeah, you give your speakers. So I just want to introduce uh, Jefferson Stanley. He uh, runs a business that's located in the property that the city's buying. Um, he needs to relocate someplace. Uh, we don't have a contract signed with him. He's one of the businesses that we could potentially uh, retain here in downtown Middleton with some assistance. Um, the gap is extraordinary for his business, as it is for all those businesses in that property, uh, because they've been there for such a long time. They have you know, lower rent, and they, they don't have to do build-out if they stay there, but if they move, they have to. Um, so, Jefferson Stanley. As, as Terrence mentioned, my name is Jefferson Stanley. I have a home health care business here in Middleton. Uh, over on Parmenter, that's uh, being uh, bought out by the city here in the next year, and um, We'd love to. We'd love to stick around. I mean, it, we. I've been in Middleton for four years. We have probably 75 uh, employees right now. Over the last four years, we've employed uh, close to 400 over the course of that time. Um, I see a lot of growth in the home health care business. A um, uh, lot of a lot of need for it. Um, to Terrence's point, it's very expensive right now to relocate, and we would love to continue to be part of the community and. Uh, an incentive to get us into the building for the first at least few years uh, would go a long way, and I think that a lot of businesses like mine feel the same way, which is if you give incentives, it doesn't have to be a long period of time, but something strong up front that gives uh, the best step forward, I think that you'll see a lot of businesses step up and start renting that space, because it is a great space, and it's a great location, and Middleton's a great place to be. Any questions for, uh, for Jefferson? Any questions for Jeff or any of the others, Terrence or Terrence? Yeah, can I ask Terrence a question? I mean, as as everyone knows, we just make a recommendation. Council makes the determination. Right. But uh, there's two opposite metaphors going in my mind, right? One is don't throw good money after bad, which is it seems like Okay. The other is, uh, mm -hmm. if you're in for a penny, in for a pound, that we've already, mm -hmm. in essence, put in $10 million. If, if this is really what's going to make or break the project, um, so I know that council is probably thinking that way too. Mm -hmm. how, but how do you react to that? Sure. Um, I think. Uh, I mean, I understand the two metaphors. Uh, I think that's a good. Those are two good metaphors. Um, I also understand, you know, staffs job they're giving you a really good job doing a good job of giving you pros and the cons and that's their job you know it's your job to actually make the decision the recommendation to council um, city of madison I, to answer your question city of madison just awarded another 11 million dollars an additional 11 million dollars to the judge doyle square project for exactly the same reason for the construction costs yes the construction costs there have skyrocketed um, the project became infeasible and it's not anybody's fault it's just the way the world is right now, but the and they got caught in this timing. Yet. Yes, it is. There's a huge, massive hole in There's the ground. There's a hole in the ground. Yes, that's right. So they are thought yesterday. Yes, yeah. yes, it's well under construction. <laughs> um, it is a partnership between the city and uh, the developer over there, and they are um, each doing a component, but they're doing it together, and they've signed the deal, and they're, you know, they have to move forward, and, and the project became infeasible uh, due to the skyrocketing construction costs. So. This is not, uh, you know, you're not doing anything unique or precedent setting. It, this is a unique situation with the current status of the world. You know, when we get another recession, costs will come down. You know, if the tariffs don't go in place, I think some of those steel costs might come down in a year. You know, it usually takes about nine to 12 months maybe to come down. But by that time, it'll be too late. You know, then the stigma will be attached to the, the downtown and to the property, and you know, there'll be nobody, you know, no getting anybody in there. Um, so it's, I mean, it's your job to make the tough decisions, and uh, we can all find reasons to say no. I admit that. There, it's really easy to find reasons to say no, and it's harder to find reasons to say yes. Um, I think the bottom line is, do you want a successful downtown? 
uh, that's really the bottom line question. Um, you know, when we talk about TIF for things, uh, Kilkenny in Wanakee uh, already had their residential development started. They had three commercial businesses on Highway Q, and they established a brand new TID on that development. It was already two years in, into the project life. There were already buildings there and businesses there, and, uh, and they established the TID and said the but for test was met, um, and they used it, the money to uh, pay for the improvements on Highway Q, nothing extraordinary. We're paying for our own improvements, for example, on Highway M, same exact situation. So, you know, Middleton, or, or excuse me, Wanakee, Madison, Verona, I mean, Epic's already there. They're still giving Epic new TIF you know, every time they do a new phase, but Epic's already there. There's nothing unique about the situation in terms of you as a city can provide this tip. But bottom line is, it's not city money. It's my money, I'll be at risk for it. Um, all you're doing is authorizing uh, me to go get the additional TIF dollars from a bank in the form of a loan. And then uh, we take out that loan and we use those additional TIF dollars and then it's paid back through the property taxes. Um, Abby's correct, if we don't use all of our increment, then there would be some increment left over, but that was never the intent for this development. It was to have 100%, because we all knew that was, I mean, this is a massive, massive project. It's extraordinarily difficult to build this. We, you know, we used to stack trucks on the highway and bring them down one at a time. We're not even allowed to do that anymore. We have to rent land off-site to bring in, uh, to store materials and, and have trucks wait off-site at a great, a great distance to deliver you know, planks, concrete planks. I mean, I can go through a hundred different things that are quite unique and extraordinary to this project. And we've incurred significant extra costs during construction that nobody could have predicted, right? We're not asking for that. We're, we're asking for additional TIF that I'd be at risk for, that I will use those dollars to help these particular businesses come here and open up. We can fill up almost all the entirety of Hubbard Avenue storefronts. Uh, if we have this TIF. We'll have a bay left over on Parmenter, but the TIF would be approved to help provide some help with that. And we can start to fill up the office space. And if we capture the one tenant who bring the 60 jobs, we would be full on all the office space, including the tenants we talked to tonight. So we could really make this a huge success uh, for you as a city and for downtown, not necessarily for us financially, because we're having to reduce rents to try to make this work for them, again, to help them step their way into this over two or three, four years. Uh, to make it work. So I know you can find reasons to say no. You know, then the downside is very significant. Uh, let me assure you, it will not be pretty. It will be a disaster. And phase three will never get built. The upside to you is significant also, but there's no risk to you on the upside. It's all my risk. So thank you for listening. I really appreciate your attention and happy so to answer any other questions. One of the suggestions was made that you know, reduce the rent to begin with, get the tenants in the building, and then work toward the long-term stability of the office and the retail. Mm -hmm. you, you have already, or you are in the process of doing it, or? Uh, sure, so we, to answer your first question, we have um, reduced the rents uh, for all these prospects. Um, they just simply can't afford the pro forma rents that we have to get, you know, f in our pro forma to make it all work. Um, so we've reduced the rents over a number of years, uh, trying to step it up over time, you know, three, four, five years uh, to make it work. I mean, we've tried for two years to try to get tenants to come in and pay the pro forma work rents based on the construction costs, and, and that's not happening. We've lost a lot of prospects. Um, the second question you asked was the long-term viability, correct, of these tenants. <coughs> um, I think the office tenants are very long-term viable. That's, I mean, there's no question there. Retail's a little more dicey, right? You're competing with the internet and, and uh, Amazon in particular uh, is 44% of the online sales. They're killing retail in small towns and cities all across the country, just like Walmart used to do. Um, but the, so admittedly the retail viability is more iffy, but I have been in you know retail leasing for 35 years and there's r certain ratios and things and so you know, we look at the potential sales uh, of the business and we then back into, okay, what kind of rent do they need to make this work for their budget and uh, try to formulate a plan that will be successful for them, that they can work and afford. Um, if we go in and charge too much rent, right, they're gonna go out of business, right? 
So we are, that's what we've done. We've tried to reduce the rents to, to make a plan that will sustain them long term. And they are signing, uh, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Taylor, I think are they all the 10-year leases or almost all of them are at 10-year leases. So they're committed to be here at least 10 years and they want to be here longer. Um, and, you know, I think having a clothing cluster in particular, the women's boutique, the men's clothing store, et cetera, is going to be hugely helpful to your other storefronts in downtown. The turnover across the street has been just consistent. You know, it's just constantly turning over. Uh, if we could help put an end to that and bring sustainability to that property too, that would be successful for, for downtown. What's the mix in phase two and phase three? Um, so in phase, um, fortunately it's much different. Uh, so this property, ha the phase one here has the most retail and office component, most commercial, co and we have about 65, is it 65, 60, 61, sometimes the unit counts change as we get to final development, but 61 units in this phase, uh, which we're at 92% leased on the apartments, you know, but the project's not viable without the commercial space being leased because it's a large amount of commercial space. My question is... Yes, I'm, I'm getting there. So, so phase two, we only have 14,000 square feet of commercial, so a fraction of the amount, but also we have 98 apartments. And then phase three, we only have a tiny amount of commercial space. I think it's 5,000 square feet. I, I don't remember the number of units, but so the ratios are there are different. This is the one that we're really challenged with because number one, your first phase always incurs much more cost than your second and third phase because it's first. And then number two, it just has a high percentage of commercial space. Does Wh that, which that help you? Which was the phase that we eliminated uh, a floor of office and made it apartments? Uh, phase, two. phase two, yeah, and that was a huge help. Uh, that would not have been viable without doing that. I think there's 98 apartments in phase yeah. two, and there's yeah. I think there's 61. Yeah. yeah, and the city already provided, right? Abby provided the, some additional TIF there in phase two, so we're we're good there, and we do have a, a prospective uh, service business that might take 10,000 square feet there, uh, hopefully, if it you know comes together. And we're helping them. Does that is that what you were asking? Because yeah, my question is. Are we going to be back at this in another year? No. Uh, the proposal is, w w um, and the reason is this. We're not asking for uh, the TIF assistance <laughs> just for these four tenants. We've provided a schedule uh, for all the, the spaces as to what we feel will be needed based on the actual bids that we have compared to the $25 allowance uh, in the budget, that we, in the dollars we have approved by our bank. Uh, so we'll have it covered, right? And uh, we're suggesting to you or to the council that uh, the details of each uh, TIF amount for each business be approved by staff. Uh, so you would approve the whole in terms of the dollar amount, you know, and this is available for Middleton Center, and then we would go to staff and say, okay, here's tenant A, here's tenant B, here's the bids, we show you the bids, we show you our allowance, we show you the difference, this is the amount of dollars that we need out of the total package, and then they would uh, approve that uh, detail before uh, we go and get the bank loan. I understand that, but I still think that that, uh, mm -hmm. that creates a precedent because it, the, the money is going directly on a case-by-case basis to the retailer. So what's going to, in the next project down the road, what's going to stop somebody else? I mean, you say it's a case-by-case. -case. Mm -hmm. We could be, end up doing this everywhere, and that's not the road that we want to go down. Sure, I understand what you're saying. Um, but uh, your father, in fact, <laughs> was there when significant... TIF was provided for Greenway Center, including Greenway Station, which is retail. Uh, Middleton or uh, Muster Museum was retail. They brought, you know, they brought Muster Museum from another and city that, that and may gave TIF. Mistake, and we won't so probably we won't make yeah. that same one. Right, but I'm just saying it's not a precedent. It's been and done before. And Madison also. Father. Yeah, uh, you know, I understand. I'm just, you know, making a pun there. That, um, and you're correct. I, you know, I didn't mean to imply what you're saying, but and you're, that's a fair statement. Uh, Madison, in particular, has used TIF significantly to help their retail in downtown because it would not have been viable uh, without the TIF. Now, they don't use TIF to help State Street because the students there provide that boost and it's, it's viable, but they do uh, use TIF to help downtown retail. In fact, now they're getting to the point where with Amazon and the Internet, you know, they're finding that you know, if you don't have alcohol, it's very difficult to sustain retail downtown Madison, so they're getting too many alcohol licenses. This is what the mayor of Madison is saying. And they're, they'd like to get more retail. You know, I used to do retail leasing on State Street. Um, and we had real, th real stores, clothing stores. Well, they don't get those anymore. 
So Does that help? Or is that uh, Aileen? So th right, thank you. Is Madison providing assistance for retail? I don't know the details of Madison, sorry. I mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they've done that for years around the Capitol Square. Uh, almost every project on the Capitol Square with their retail has received TIF. I think there are a lot of loose ends. Rather than well, voting on this, should we send it back to the staff and they can work out the details if there's any? Well, I have a question, Abby, in yes. the yeah. um, but for clause. Um, Terrence's um, attorney seems to think that it will it would fly. What, what do our people say? We've discussed this with Matt Fleming, our assistant city attorney, and he's reviewed this letter. And I would say that Matt hasn't flat out said, you know, this would this would be a legal problem for the city. He has not gone as far as to say that. But I think I can say, and Eileen, correct me if I'm going too far here, that Matt Fleming is fully in support of the staff's position on this request. And the but for test, we, we had a long discussion on the but for test, and it, it's both a legal requirement and it's also a policy decision. Yes, Scott. Can I ask Van, do, does the chamber have a position on this? Because uh, my other question is, <laughs> I mean, we do have, sorry, I, I, I don't know if you I was awake. I, I <laughs> no, because um, I know we do have MADC, which has funded tenant improvements before, on a loan term. I don't know if that's even possible, but historically, <laughs> MADC has, has not been extremely supportive of retail. They're looking at it differently now. They're looking at uh, Middleton Center as the hub of the downtown, and. There's concern that if <clears throat> this building remains empty on the first floor, that it, it will stifle both existing business, and I have retailers downtown that are nervous already mm -hmm. because they said, oh, this is coming, it's gonna be full, it's gonna help us, we're gonna have this cluster, and uh, um, the cluster is disintegrating to some degree on Parmenter Street um, with a couple of losses, one, one gone, Middleton Dress and Nina. Um, on its way out. <clears throat> so does the chamber have a specific position? No, other than it's really important to have a strong downtown. And um, you know, I know Terrence has talked about you know the hurricanes and whatever else for some period of time, and you can hear blah, blah, blah if you want. But we have both plumbing entities members and masonry members that when the tariffs were discussed, their costs went up immediately, 30-some yeah. yeah. percent. And I don't know if you built a house recently, but you can imagine trying to quote plumbing work, HVAC work, or masonry that involves steel and only be given a 72-hour price guarantee. Yeah, That's the kind of stuff we're seeing. So when, when, when you say but for, we're in a really bizarre time right now, nationally and locally. And we haven't seen this for some period of time. And you, you might be able to recall some time where suppliers couldn't quote prices for more than 72 hours because there was so much uncertainty. And I look at every development coming down the road and what are, what is the pricing going to be? You know, what happens <clears throat> it w with some of the trade things? So this is a crucial part of the city. It's crucial downtown. And um, um, I tend to not think about individual retailers and competition. I look at the project, and I and you made a, a you know you said two metaphors. Well, the second metaphor, you're in for this much, it's another ten percent. I'm not even looking at the individual retailers. I'm looking at the project, saying if another ten percent makes a difference and can help make this successful and get it launched and get it flying, I'm in personally. Yeah. Any questions for Ryan? Well, the, I mean, the irony is is not lost that developers are facing a cost from the president who himself is a developer. I think our developers, I, pay, I could, their, our developers pay their I bills. I could go harder on Terrence, but I think yeah. he, he, knows, he knows where I'm going with that. He knows where I'm going. Anyhow, two cents. Just a comment. Yes, David. Uh, um, good. Um, 
twice this evening. I, I, first of all, I, I understand what you're saying, Terence, and I have some sympathy for what, you, what you're talking about. What worries me is that twice this evening, the threat of phase three has been evoked. And I find that most distasteful. R phase three won't happen unless. And I don't like having that put in front of us. No. Yeah, I apologize. It's not a threat or anything. It's that we won't be able to get the loan from the bank. That's all. It be out of our hands. That's all. Um, it, you know, it's getting very dicey with getting loans right now because uh, interest rates are going up and all the costs are going up. So I didn't mean it as a threat. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Can I just ask a procedure question? Yes. Either way, if we vote in favor or against, it would go to council, or do we need a specific vote to, to recommend it back to council, or does it automatically go back to council? Well, Abby and I, we, we had talked about this at staff. I, the Planning Commission can't act on the um, first request by itself. It, ha it requires council approval. So. I think we ended up that it does need to go to the council, whether it's kind of like a zoning thing, yeah. whether it's up or down, it's the council that makes the decision. Abby, do you feel differently? Yep, I agree. And is it is it uh, acceptable to offer a split, to split the two between retail and office? No, we can split. I think so. We can just make a recommendation. I would move to recommend to council um, our support for the additional 464,000 in assistance to help with the building, build out, shout, build out shortfall for the office uses subject to uh, the staff recommendations in Abby's memo. Okay, need a second. Not going anywhere, so okay. so I think uh, maybe we should send it back to staff and for them to work with the developer and come up with something. If you're sending it back to us, I would just request that you let us know specifically what you want us to do, because we've been working on this for with yeah. you all for a long yeah, time. It's not, I think okay, so I think I think the developer does need a definitive action by council, so. We can choose to either send it back to council with no recommendation, or <laughs> just reading the room, probably a recommendation of denial. Can, can I ask why you thought splitting it would change the situation? Well, it's it's been our consistent policy not to do this for retail, and the competitive nature of retail and the turnover, the perception that it would be unfair. Um, but we do have a history of uh, making the office uses work, particularly um, th with the economic development incentive. Economic the, development incentive, I'm sorry. But, but the same conditions apply to both situations. I mean, well, I don't you think... Read, if you read Abby's memo, yeah. it's a, it's both, both sections are identical, essentially. Well, except that our project plan does mention economic development <coughs> for office uses. But that figure wouldn't come anywhere near the 464,000. Right. You could make a guess. I couldn't even make a guess, but it wouldn't even come close to that, would it? Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how many new jobs, new office jobs would go into the different office spaces. So you can see on page two, under office, there are four office spaces, and they total about 12,000 square feet. Um, and you know, I don't know, we don't know who the other prospects are, aside from the insurance agency. And, and I was, and Jefferson. sorry, and, and I was, making the recommendation based on the idea that um, you know retail is competitive and, and in a difficult situation it seems unfair but to make the again is the idea that in for a penny in for a pound so since it's developer financed up to a hundred percent if that's what's necessary to get 
some of the office jobs available that will help stabilize downtown. But if it we talk, seems, but if it, we're talking about the life of the city and the development of a strong center, then you need retail. Then we're talking as well. about the retail. I, I can't predict where retail is going to go, but no. it's it's not up. Okay, well, that motion dies for lack of yeah. a second, but uh, I, think I think we need to, s so my instructions to I the staff Jen would was be. I think Jen was going to say something. Yes, go ahead. I guess I wanted to ask staff, is there, what were some of the other, um, in the TID 3, what are the you, things that you'd want to use the, the TIF monies for? or have the availability of it to be there for? And you mentioned the, the town square, and I'm just curious how that is a consideration in this. Well, I mean, I guess the point I was trying to make is that we have a lot of projects where we enter into a TIF agreement. We always try to use conservative assumptions, and uh, you know that's to the city's benefit if the tax value comes in higher. So, you know, when we enter into a TIF agreement, it's the developer's risk that, you know, we, we may have said we expect this to be 100%, but if the value comes in higher, that's to the general benefit of the TIF. And there are a lot of projects in TIF 3 that we want to work on. Mm -hmm. um, just to give you an example of three big ones that are coming up in the next couple of years, uh, the second phase of University Avenue, reconstruction from Park Street West to Cayuga Court is in TIF, it would be a TIF 3 funded project. Um, Parmenter Street intersection, the city has, is in the process of acquiring properties um, in order to add a left turn lane at that intersection. Um, there are a lot of costs involved in that. Uh, that, that's in TIF 3 and being funded with TIF funding. Another one is the re, complete reconstruction of Parmenter Street from University Avenue south to Terrace Avenue. Um, that will come one year later than phase two of University Avenue. Um, that will be funded with TIF 3. And the other big one that I mentioned already is the downtown plaza, which the city has already paid 1.2 million to acquire those properties. Um, we're in, we are working with Ken Psyche to design the project and we'll find out soon you know, what the estimated costs of construction are going to be to develop that plaza. I mean, to me, when we have that plaza, those retail spaces are gonna be extremely valuable and very viable. While I understand that, you know, he's working with tenants now that, that um, you know, he's trying to lure. I mean, to me, that, that's a great asset for the downtown and it's directly across the street from those retail spaces so, so point out though mm, sorry go ahead. that that and we'll we're going to have a either an agenda item or um you know we'll we'll check in about the tiff probably coming up in one of our um, financial committees we didn't do it here because you know new members and um, a long agenda but tip three is very healthy we've taken we've subtracted property worth um or valued at over 377 million dollars from tip three and we have over 400 million dollars worth of value in it and growing every day. So it is it is pretty healthy. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm not trying to imply that if <laughs> this is granted we won't be able to move forward on those other projects because we will. I think that the the TIF has enough increment that we can do both. And also this money won't be really available even if we were to use it. I mean, we're going to do the plaza soon and the same with the other projects, so, so I think. Yeah, uh, I mean, there are a lot of projects in TIF 3. I mean, Pleasant yeah. View Road is mm -hmm. yeah. the biggest huge. outstanding That's project huge. in TIF 3. Yeah, That's I agree huge. that uh, yeah. if there's the money, there will be ways to use it. Right, yeah, there's so, lots of projects. So, so these are the questions which I would like to know that, uh, you know, if I go back to the staff, that uh, um, Darren said that there's a, um, you know, the Madison has used the money for uh, retail and some of the, I would like to collect that data, at least have information if the Madison and the other cities have helped the developers that way. And also- Do you want specifically if Madison has helped to with 
building out a retail space for a new tenant? Yeah, it would be something to know. And if there are other cities as well. Okay. Uh, and then Dan, uh, Dan Rolfs at the city of Madison can answer that question. Okay. But they also have a TIF policy. They don't do developer finance TIF. So they're a little more conservative on the underwriting. Yeah, I mean, that's the other argument in favor of if if the agreement was 100% of the increment, which that may be one way to read it. Um, that's one reason to support this. But And also, in this case, you know, the motion you made, so the office part, since the Middleton has done for Paradigm, for ETC, for, um, for the... Um, some of the other places as well. So I think it's something which we do want to look into. So. so so, I would just say that, you know, have another look at it, so. Okay, so specifically you want to know if the city of Madison has used TIF to build out a retail space in a new building. And That's you want to know, you want. The what? You want examples of other instances where the city provided economic development incentives. Yeah. So what the, like a paragraph description of the company, yes. the number of jobs, yeah. what the amount of assistance was. And if Madison is doing similar thing too, which we could use as an example. So can, can we also ask for yeah. a very simple simulation of what might happen to the assessed value of the phase one if uh, the retail space is vacant. Okay, yes, let's and see. And what happens so, to the increment? So any other questions which you would like the staff to answer if we send it back to the staff, which I think probably is a good thing to do, so. Perhaps the, that question that you're asking the city of Madison, should we ask that of other municipalities uh, that are doing significant development? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the simulation part that if it lies empty, what's going to do to the <laughs> property values of this one and around, so. Because presumably, they're using the income-based approach for assessment. Mm -hmm. If you have no income on the retail, you have no Any other value questions? increments. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Any other questions that you would like the staff to answer? I want to get a more definitive answer from Yes. Also, let's get that but for test from Matt Fleming. Okay. Lee, anything else that you would like? I, I guess I would ask if there were any other alternative scenarios that the developer has thought of that um, might be worth sharing. Um, yep. So that we could look at those as well. Yeah, sit down with him and look at the global picture, all the pros and cons and all options, you know, what happens if uh, this happens and what happens if this happens. So I think the downtown is pretty important. We want it to be vibrant and, uh, you know, we have to see if there's anything which we can do. So, so I don't know if we need a motion for that or uh, that's good enough to you give it direction. That it's a concern for the planning commission and you could make a motion to remove the city. Is that the consensus, more or less, send it back to the staff to look at it? Can, can I add something before we do it? Can, sure. can we ask that, uh, Eileen, perhaps you've already done this, uh, seen the agreements that Terence is talking about? Uh, and is there, a, ask the question as to whether there's time constraints on that? I don't think we've gotten those, but that's a good question. Okay, so look at those Thanks. one, and also look at, uh, is it 100% of the TIF? We Plus the limit, or what is that? We can uh, look at the exact language. I ha haven't reviewed it lately, but I think it's it's 100% of the TIF increment up to the maximum that we found at the time were the TIF eligible expenses and could be paid for with the estimate. Plus then the interest at a certain rate, not to exceed that rate. So I think that's the language, but we'll look up the exact okay. language. Okay, yeah. look, yeah. yeah. look at the language, look at the language and, uh, and, and what hard with the sit down with the developers and let's come up with some uh, solutions or whatever <coughs> we can so so but, is that the but aware of the fact that th this can't this process can't last too long it needs yep. to come to council yep. pretty it soon. has to be done at yeah. a high priority so right. so is that the consensus here or somebody 
I don't know if somebody wants to make more motion or we can just send it to the staff by consensus. Okay, all right. Consensus. Yes. Okay, thanks. What, what, what would be a reasonable time for this? Next. Yeah, the next meeting. It's June 12th. Okay. Three weeks. Yeah, that's up to June. Okay, work with these. Well, if, uh, it, 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 I'm certainly fine given that we've seen it mm -hmm. and debated it. If if it's more urgent, it can go right to council without our. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, okay. that's okay. Yeah. Without our without our recommendation, do we do our ordinances require that we have to m provide a recommendation? Mm -hmm. okay. No. Is that your preference? Okay. When's so the next council? It's June, June 5th. 5th. So in the information, we would provide to the council the same info, and we would also say plan commission discussed and directed staff to yeah. provide information, but yep. also said that it could yep. go directly. Yep. Okay. Okay. Got it. Does everybody agree? Yes. yes. All right. Okay. So anybody, any last thing that you want to say, Patrice, work with them, you know, as quickly as possible and come up with some solutions so okay all right so we move on to the next thing now oh and mrs terrence too but here's the staff recommendation and approval it's it's my fault that it that we added that two foot restriction at the last meeting at the last minute that wasn't part of the joint committee um, approval the um, night before and the building is going up because of drainage. It's actually going to go up 1.75 feet, so it's 20 I inches. And I went, I drove out there a couple times. You're not going to see it, and it's actually getting it away from the buildings that have already been built on Callaway right. Court. Um, and so I think, you know, you, there's uh, all the conditions of approval, but my recommendation is. Uh, take out that condition. Okay. It can't go up two feet. We are. Uh, well, I'll make a motion that we. Would it a minor SIP as Eileen is outlined. Okay, need a second. second. Okay, so we are on to item number three, which is the SIP modification of the master's apartment building number three, 5251 Bishop Way Parkway. So, and uh, condition of approval raise the elevation by 42 feet. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes. Terrence, you got at least something positive. Yes. Yes. Okay, go one, ahead and celebrate one, now at least one, part one of comment. So. I think, yes. uh, I think the, the, the drawing that shows the elevations of that storm sewer, there's an incorrect, it, it lists an yeah. elevation uh, 926, that uh, should be 946. Uh, okay, then motion is with the, that correction in there, so. Okay. All right, a request for uh, item number On four. On the drawing with the red labels. Okay, item number four. Yeah, those numbers. Yeah. It's draining the wrong way. Item number four, request for I don't read it, conditional it. use permit for Abra Auto Body right, Repair okay. of America. Wayne also. 8026 for Cynthia Street. Wayne provided the. Um, yes. Some recommendations, and I did provide them to the applicant tonight. Yes. Arrived. Um, so the recommendation would be that those be added. I think they've already taken care of some of the issues that we might have, which would be outdoor storage. They have the fencing, um, and they've increased the landscaping, and that's at your pack at your place. And they've um, also given some. Um, and this is the next item too, the design review. But they've also given some additional information on the fencing, and also I think they are prepared to talk about the rooftop. And also the building materials. Okay, so so you had not asked for approval to begin with. So right, but I I, I support the conditional use permit um, because the plan commission's already made the determination that this would be an appropriate conditional use, and there is a letter of support in your packet from the property owner, uh, Gene yeah, Whitish, yeah. in support of it because of the other facilities that are in the area. So do I have a motion for the conditional use permit of this lot? Well, Hold it one second. subject to all the conditions specified. 
as specified, which would include um, Well, actually, Eileen, the landscaping fencing and screening is it's at the design, SIP level. It's not yeah, at the conditional it's use true. level. It's true. It's the next item. Okay. But, yeah, you're right. But um, they kind of fit together, but um, it would be just subject to that, and then the next item is taking okay. care of it. But the conditional use would be the items that Wayne laid out. And I don't think there's uh, significant noise or... Um, Hours of operation yeah, go ahead. be discussed. I'll try to answer that. I'm Paul Tusi. I'm with Hop Dan. Was here, geez, seems like yesterday, but it's been a while. Four months or so. Um, the the uh, the things that uh, Commissioner Berthert, did I say <laughs> that right? Yep. I did not use the P. <laughs> um, I, I think most of those are are. I, I think the biggest um, of the five bullet points is the fifth one. We we have to comply with all state and federal regulations. I'll just, um, I'll just kind of point out, uh, I'll go top to bottom on the uh, VOCs. Um, the, the biggest pollutant, if you want to call it that, would be the paint booth. Mm -hmm. The paint booth itself is an enclosed facility with its own uh, uh, air circulation, makeup air filtration system. So it, it is state of the art. It doesn't, you know, it's kind of like the closed loop dry cleaners today. Um, you all know. your painting does, it, does occur within the booth. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's all, and, and, and as I understand it, it's a big oven. Yep. Because <laughs> they bake that car when it's done. Uh, the generation of hazardous waste, the hazardous waste primarily comes from the paints that are in the, uh, the, the store itself. Remember that this is not, this is a body shop, not a mechanic shop, so if, it, if we need brake work, if we need transmission work, that, and that'll happen when a car is damaged, but that goes off-site to another provider somewhere in that process, then would come back to Abra's facility for the body work and the glass work to be completed. Um, the dust and sanding operations, uh, interesting point because I've learned a ton about that in, in the time we've been working with them. The one thing that's going on here is um, there are two units up on the roof for the shop area that are uh, the air exchange system that's required by uh, different municipalities have different requirements. We're doing a deal in Memphis and it was one uh, CFM that we had to move and I was like, holy cow, we have a ton of units up on that roof to get that air moving because it's a bigger facility. Um, so that is in their filtration system and ABRA has a national um, uh, contract for the maintenance of that because as you can imagine that dust coming up those filters in about a day will be about that thick with uh, <coughs> dust so I think all of these uh, are, are things that we will do I would ask that the the, um, the the compliance requirement is that we meet um, that last one that's really I think they're all encompassed in that last one um, I don't know, you know, when you say minimize the release of VOCs from where to where is kind of the question. I think my question is if we meet the guidelines, is that what you're looking for? So I would, I would say that uh, an operation like a um, vehicle repair shop can be a great neighbor with the right operational pra practices. Um, it is more than compliance because compliance uh, is m meeting a, a certain level. However, um, th I know that the DNR and EPA works very proactively with shops to actually, rather than just capture the waste after it's generated, the idea is in terms of paint selection application processes to actually reduce the amount of VOCs and hazardous air pollutants, which can be done simply by things like the kinds of spray guns that you use and the kind of training that you Yeah, and, and, and I understand that question and that comment. I can't stand here and honestly say to you that if it's gun A versus gun B and Abra's national provider is gun A, that they're going to go to gun B. I can't stand here and say that. That's why it, I, I'm trying to get an <coughs> idea of when you put these down. You know, the, the external storage of hazard or flamm flammable waste, that's a non-event. We won't do that. Um, the release of dust beyond the building, I would say that you know, we everything's done with the doors closed. We do have uh, the air movement. We do have a filtration system, but 
can dust get outside the building? Sure it can. I mean, it, it, so that's a hard one for me to understand. It, we're trying not to, our system is set up to not be, they don't have the doors open uh, like a normal, uh, uh, say a Firestone or Goodyear might in the summertime. One of the things that we're doing is we are air conditioning the shop. So obviously we're gonna have the doors closed so we don't, uh, as my dad used to say, heat the outside. Um, and so I, I get that. The, minim the minimization of hazardous waste is that's best practices in everything we do. So I, I clearly uh, agree with that. And the VOCs, we're gonna do everything to keep those down. But again, I, you know, uh, are we setting a bar is my question. And so I think generally we can work with it. I just would like a little more parameter about what are we trying to hit. Okay. Well, well ex fine. except the conditional use says facility shall adopt best practices too. So yeah. presumably that's, if it was ever litigated, best practices would be based on oh, best yeah. available science and exactly. industry standards. Yeah, and, and if that's all it and, is, then and, we're, and we're it is, fine and, with that. And in that. fact, at, at the bottom of my thing here, uh, I list the DNR site that actually gives those best practices. Yeah. So yes, and, and if that's if that's all we're being that's, asked, that's we're the fine. Here. The, it's just that if we're getting into right. individual levels, I just have to have some idea of what those levels are. Oh, yeah. And, 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 I, has something and to say. I apologize. I meant to include this in the packet and, and at the last minute forgot. <coughs> the conditions that the Planning Commission placed on the conditional use permit process for this use in this business park were um, the initial conditions, four-sided architecture, um, appropriate fencing and or screening for outdoor storage area as determined by the Planning Commission, lighting to meet the requirements of the city's lighting ordinance, hours of operation determined through the conditional use process, compliance with all applicable city ordinances, including signage and noise, and any other provisions required by the City of Middleton Planning Commission to help ensure compatibility with other uses in the area in the GIP. So I think that, I think what you're saying- That's, that's the intent yeah. here, to yeah. ensure that it's a yeah. suitable neighbor. Uh, and I am sorry that I didn't include this. Well, that's okay. That's so. okay. Because it's already a conditional use in the GIP. Yeah. We're just, recommending to council that they approve the conditional use permit right. yep. subject to these conditions. Subject to these conditions. So that's, my, that's my motion there. All right, mm -hmm. so there's a second. Okay. okay, all right, so any further discussion? David. Yes, David. The, the fence that you show on your drawing here. Can we, uh, can I jump in real quick? I think yes. that's more of the SIP it's at the discussion. SAP level. Oh, sorry. Yeah, let's all, go to the all, next you're item. You're right, I beg your pardon. Sorry. Okay, so we are ready to vote on item number four, right? Yep. yep. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Everyone opposed? So the motion passes about the conditional use permit. Now we are on to item number five, which is the design review and uh, specific SAP implementation plan modification for signage and. Uh, Abra Auto Body Repairs of America. It's only for signage. Design um, review and design. Right, it's design review primarily. Yes. And they, there were new, um, a, a new elevation and a new site plan and, and a new landscaping plan placed in yeah. just tonight. And that's in response. The original elevations didn't really show the items and show the fencing too much, so they revised it and I also was requesting additional landscaping and they revised it. Did, did we take action on the design last time? No. Okay, I this didn't think design. so. This is design review on signage. And you just have two signs, one on Forsythia and one on airport. Yeah. If, if, if you're okay, I'll give kind of an overview and, and then- Yeah, I, go, go ahead. I would ask, uh, I know that we're gonna have a fence question, but any other questions that come up. So last time we were here, we showed you a rendering uh, of the facility and, and we've, we've uh, sent a new one in. It's basically the same building. Couple of things that I will uh, point out is uh, we've added some architecture on the, what I'll call the exposed side of the building, which in this case will be the east side of the building where the drive off of Forsythia comes in. Um, in the original elevation that we showed you, if you <coughs> recall, there were orange doors uh, I will say, thankfully, those are gone. Um, and it, I think it, it, it takes, that, that orange took away from the building. It just, er, your eye went right to that orange door. Uh, the fence is, we talked about this last time and I'll, I'll reiterate that it's an eight foot high um, maintenance-free vinyl privacy fence. The fence is designed to have a couple of 
functions primarily uh, with their insurance carriers, one of the things that ABRA has to have is a secure area that your car is in, either as it's going through the process of getting repaired or waiting to be picked up. An eight foot high privacy fence, they, uh, someone isn't, you could still get over it, but it's less likely that, uh, you know, I don't know about anyone here, I can't get over an eight foot fence. I might have a shot at a six foot fence. So that's why they go to eight feet. <laughs> I um, won't try. So. Yeah, it, it also it also helps um, in in a lot of the locations that we're putting them in in um, the Minneapolis market in Denver and out east. Um, the we're, we're taking sites like this that are a little more visible. This isn't an industrial park use. They want to be out where people can see them. You bring your car in. You don't want to be driving through an industrial park. You want to be in more of a service retail area. So that fence provides the visual screening. Um, we have a facility uh, by where, where I live in Minneapolis. Um, they don't have the fence and you drive by and all you see is cars with fenders off and bumpers off and it just looks like a mess. They, they don't have the fence at the Odana Road site, right? Uh, no, they don't. And, and you know, you drive by yeah, and you see, it. you see everything. And, and that's one of the things that they're trying to, in the new prototype, they're trying to get rid of as they move into more of a service retail position versus that industrial position. Um, so it, it, it helps screen from, it, security inside, screen from uh, the visual outside. I will tell you when we started this process with them, that fence was chain link and, and we told them straight up that uh, that's great, you can put that in your prototype, just don't get too comfortable with it because it's gonna be asked as we move out of the industrial parks and into these more service retail areas, we're gonna have to upgrade that to something that looks better, is maintenance free, you know, you, you're not gonna see, wanna see a wood privacy fence that fades and looks like heck in two years. So uh, that's what's going on there. On the building side, we do have rooftop units. We try to screen those with the parapets and by positioning them in the middle of the building. So visually, if you're on that sidewalk, you're not gonna see that. Um, you know, there, there are uh, multi-story buildings to the south of us if you're on the top uh, upper levels of those uh, facilities you're going to see them um, uh, there's nothing we can do to screen them when you're 20 feet up in the air you're 25 feet up in the air you're going to see them um, on the landscaping uh, Eileen and I had a, a very uh, productive discussion she's smiling we uh, I was uh, uh, unsure of what I was being asked and uh, I, I kind of wouldn't I, w I went a little bit off the reservation, so I apologize publicly to Eileen uh, on that discussion it last week. Um, we, we've mixed up the varieties. Eileen asked us to add some more shrubs um, and trees. We, we did um, put in some different varieties of trees. The idea is that um, we're, we're trying to make the, both the airport road side, keeping there's three trees out there on the east side, northeast side of our property, we'll maintain those. Uh, add some more trees up on the front and down the sides of the building. The fence ad acts as a screen to the building. Um, we've added some landscaping on the Forsythia side to soften that as you come in. Um, we'll have some. We'll have a directional sign back there to you know send you into the facility. You come up the east side of the building around the front to a parking area in front of the fence. That's where you can move in. Um, and then uh, we will have a pylon sign, or a, I'm sorry, a monument sign, sorry about that word, uh, up on the airport road side. So we did upgrade, we added planting materials, we, we changed some varieties around at the request of staff, and uh, we apologize for the late uh, send in, but we, we tried to get it in before this meeting. A couple things, I didn't, do you have, you, did you submit the pylon sign? I can't no, we haven't. We, we just sent, we okay. just submitted a location. The idea there is the pylon sign will have a base. Your requirement is it has to have a solid base. The base will match, materials will match the building, so you bring the building out to the street. And Mark, the landscaping plan is the new, what was just submitted today. Abby said she loaded it. Yeah, I don't see it here. No, Unless it's, uh, it's this. Oh, the landscaping plan is different than the one. Yeah, it's different. They've yeah, we, we've added we've added kind some material and we've changed some species and trying to uh, add some mostly on the north and south end. Yep. But I think with that, I, I, I mean, if you have anything else, or I'd be open to questions. Yeah, 
Let's okay, see. questions. Yes. Go how, many, how many jobs is this going to be? It, it depends on the, um, the, the facility. The, the average facility ranges from about 12 to 20. Uh, they have some that are, 12 is probably the lowest that, that I'm aware of today. Now they do go out, they have bought some new facilities and they might only have 10. Uh, but I don't, I can't tell you, I know they have uh, a number that are over 20 and it all depends on the volume. Other questions? David. Okay, I have problems with the drawing. This one? What, you, what you're presenting. Um, this is an eight foot fence, you say? Yes. Yeah. If I look at the plan. This one? Which, which, which plan are you on? On, on, on the landscape, the landscape plan. plan will do. Oh, okay. plan. The, yes. the new one. The new one. The, I don't know how to describe this. The, the width of the uh, door into the gate into the fenced area is lining up with the curb on, on, the, on the plan here. On here, this curb here. That's a that's a rendering. So I re realize it's yeah. a rendering, but you're trying to tell <laughs> but us. But it's what's not going a. To it, it's a. It's their prototype rendering. If you're if you're trying to match where the fence is in relation to the landscape plan, if you would go to the uh, the the elevational plan, you can see how it works with the front. Because we adjust them for each site specifically. Okay, so that's... You mean this elevation okay. plan here? Yes. But that is even worse in a way because this fence still dies into the middle of a window, right? No, it goes in between. There's three service bays. Um, the, the, in this case, the furthest north service bay is the glass door. Then there's a gap in that door of about six feet. That'll be uh, the, the uh, masonry product that we put in. The, f the fence itself will go into that solid wall. If you look at the elevation and you look at the west elevation, elevation you can yeah. see it land in between the doors. Between the two orange doors. Uh, there, there are three of them there. The, the furthest north is a glass door. Right. The two behind the fence are metal doors. It lands in between the glass and the furthest north metal door. And the doors will not be orange, right? The doors will not be orange. <laughs> yeah, we sent you. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, it's I still piece. don't understand. No. Can you can you show it on a plan? Tell me where it is. Somebody. The fence. Fence. Yeah. Yeah. On the um, west elevation. There, right. If you look at if you right. look at the screen now, look at the west elevation at the top. Right. You can see the glass door on the left hand side. Right. And then the fence lands on the masonry. I'll call it pier in between that door and then the next door, which is a metal door, so, which is inside so these, the fence. So the white things on this elevation, or the gray things, are they? Aren't windows? Are you talking about the no, left end no. of the west elevation? No, I'm, I'm talking about these things along here. Are they not windows? The, the 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 glass is on the cube area in front, that grayish area. If you again, if you look at the elevation, oh. is this what he's looking at? Oh, okay. That's what he's looking at. This, David? So there is the gray area, and then there is a door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the door has got glass in it, and and a window at the side of it. Right here. Correct. No, further along. That right. one. The, yeah, right. the door. Glass garage door. Glass there's garage. a glass garage door. Glass garage door. And then there's masonry of the building, and that's where the fence so, so that connects white into the building. Thing, white thing immediately to the right of the glass door. Mm. That's masonry. That's masonry. Yeah, that's going to be. No, those are not windows. Ah. Because now you're in the shop of the building. Looks like windows. See, I, I'm, I'm so glad you added architecture um, to, to part of the building. I don't know what the rest of the building is if it's not architecture, but that's by the way, right? Um, but so that's what is what are those panels? Uh, what is that masonry? Oh, the masonry will be a mix of uh, I I at the cube, as we call it, where the Abra signage is in the front. There'll be a mix of uh, ephus and uh, brick running along the bottom, and then as you move around the building, it will be uh, the majority of it will be rock face block. And we'll introduce some other elements. There are there are a couple of EFIS elements and metal coping elements put in. 
recall when we first showed up, we talked to their prototype is smooth painted black and we had a discussion about that and that was not uh, the direction that we were uh, told we should go. Okay, just one more thing then. What is the, the double bar H on the left hand side of the reservation? Double bar. What? This is oh, north yeah. facing. Yeah, that, those are, the those, uh, it's the east elevation. <laughs> I thought this was the west, the, uh, where yeah. the fence comes in from the west. It's on both the north and the east, I think. Yeah, it, it, those are, those are pilasters going up the building to break up the span of the wall and the uh, banding going across will be smooth block, integral color smooth block to again give some texture relief and some some breakup of the height of the building so you don't have one wall going straight up. And that's what's happening on the east elevation as well. Uh, yes, we did that on the east side to break up the wall on the west side. Um, when you're looking at that long run, you have the fence eight foot high that visually is going to screen most of that wall. And then up on the, on the northwest corner, you have the cube, that's the entry component, which has the height and the different materials. Not being too sarcastic, that's architecture, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do any of my architecture colleagues on the committee agree with that? <laughs> <laughs> architecture is befitting an industrial park. <laughs> yes, David, other questions? <laughs> no, what can I say? It's well, it's, it's a body shop, so. It's a body shop, right. Okay. Any other questions? Could we have a public art mural? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's no, a, that I'll was a different, a that was a different thing. We, we had a public art mural. Uh, okay, so th mm, other questions or otherwise we need a motion. I have another question. Um, yes. And I wasn't here last week uh, when, when the comments were put together, so I'm sorry I didn't bring this up sooner. Um, sign says it's 7 feet by 21. It's sign Avro over on the cube as you described it. Yes. Is that 7 feet the, from, I assume it's from the top of the B to the bottom of auto repair? Yes. Yeah, we, when... Okay. That, that's a, that is designed, just so we're clear, you are not approving the sign tonight. We have to come in with a sign mm -hmm. packet um, and, and um, we have to meet all city requirements for signage. And that I presume that's what it was because otherwise that would be awfully tall letters. Yes. Uh, yes. But how tall are the letters as? Uh, you know, they, they have, they have uh, four different sign packages that they go with. Um, I, I would tell you that the tallest that I am doing this from memory, I don't have it in my file, but I think the B at its tallest is 48 inches, as I that recall. Would be, in my view, too large. Yeah, that, that's why we have For a number if of. If you remember Abuelos mm -hmm. um, and how big those signs were, that was a 48 to 48 inch letter. Right. That, in my view, was, although they were block letters, so that makes it worse, but. Um, Anyway, I just would caution. We're, we're right. glad to hear we're going to. Well, we we have we have a square footage uh, maximum, and we have to meet it. So it just, it if that B takes up thirty so percent, right. we're not going to get our whole signage package approved. So okay. it'll be adjusted to meet requirements. Okay. Other questions? Kurt, Lee. Oh, I'm good. Okay. So then we need a. I'll, I'll move to. Um, Grant design approval contingent on final review by staff for landscaping, fencing, mechanical screening, resolution of engineering staff comments, and signage. Excellent. And Second. Needed. Seconded. David has a second. Now I need Just to make sure that we're, it, it's clear we're not approving the signage. No. Yes. Okay. Thank you. But, but you're saying staff approval of the signage is not approved. Yes. Okay. And is that uh, fine? That's fine. It's yes. fine with us, but I just want to. Yeah. Final review by staff for the landscaping, fencing, signage, mechanical screening, and resolution of engineering staff comment. Okay, for the discussion. Okay, so the, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes. We are on to item number six. Thank you. Thank you. Item number six is the final plat and SIP modification for fence three plat of lots four and five. Heinz Ward, I guess, uh, Seem like slam dunk, right? So the recommendation is um, approval, but there are some conditions. I think the same conditions that were 
Yeah, try to the condition as specified in the preliminary plat. The stormwater control ordinance runoff future plan commission approval <coughs> building plan plots five and six. Okay, so I have one question. Yes. On the um, on the new fence, is that um, is that part of a uh, a neighborhood association fence owned by the developer, or is that fence part of this this property? In other words, who's responsible for mm -hmm. the maintenance repair? You want to come here and Jeff uh, address this. Who will maintain the fence? There will be a homeowners association, and they would be responsible for the fence. And they're, they're also, the homeowners association will be also uh, responsible for the Homeowner. maintenance of the bioretention area too. Okay, other question about So this, this is before us as a final plat approval, right? Yes. But also a SAP modification because of lots five and six are slightly different than what we last saw? No, just for the fence at the end of okay. the property. So the only SIP modification is for the fence. Right, yes. it's the final plat recommendation and the SIP modification for the fence. Okay. Which is a separate, there's a separate submittal for the fence showing what it would look like and then the location. Okay. Okay, other questions to Tom? So, so we've already approved it as shown mm -hmm. with the exception of that is the only thing which we are approving the fence. So I'll move that we, where, yeah, we Yes, that Kathy. Wait, what? Kathy wants. Which, which letter from? from? Are you referring to the one you sent yesterday? Yeah. Oh, that's not in the packet. It's after the packet went out. I'm not sure I saw it. I don't know. Did I get it? Uh, oh. It came, out, it came yesterday? Did we, did we have it in the file? Could we hear a summary of what the comment was? Okay, yeah. so what is? Oh, I can, I can uh, it's, we got it via email. Um, I don't have it in the file. Okay. And we'll uh, get a copy of it. <coughs> so we can. But Tom, this, this is the same layout as the preliminary plat, correct? Yeah. And the same conditions apply, which is, uh, I think it's SIP for lots five and six. Right. And then you're just adding the fence for the. And the fence you're adding <coughs> for privacy, right? Or. Correct. And you're complying with the 20 foot front setback. Yeah. Yep. Just a comment while we're waiting is. Mm -hmm. It might be confusing because people may assume that lot one owns the fence. So, but if you'll put it in the homeowners association CCNRs and it'll be sure. Okay, use, so why don't you go ahead and come to use the, the mic just microphone. so we have the. Uh, I think I can do it in the preliminary. I objected to the fence along that line. That that. Um, Parking lot and Charing Cross are a pedestrian path for high school students and middle school students walking to the bus stop. A six foot, six foot high fence will be taller than everybody except people who are on the basketball team. And so I think a solid fence along that border is a, is a worrisome thing. That was Good one point. of my objections. Worrisome because when people are walking along a blank because fence, they don't know what's behind the fence. Because traffic on Charing Cross and in the parking lot in, um, at the Allen Street Apartments. Traffic is going and coming in both directions and their visibility will be impeded by a solid fence. What street is this going uh, north off of? Okay. Charing Cross and then it says exist. Yeah. Street yeah. is a parking lot. Okay. Oh, that's a parking lot. That connects to the apartments. Yes. And so what are you seeing? Cross. You're saying they won't be able to see as they're coming down Sharing Cross? That's right. Their cars will be coming in both directions. So if you see that there's a, can I show you on the plan? The 20 foot 
front setback means that the fence has to be set back from the front of the parcel 20 feet. Do you know what the line of sight triangle for a road of this <laughs> is, Wayne? Since you're a PE, you have those memorized, right? <laughs> I, I can't <laughs> say that I do. I thought when there were going to be, when the changes were made for four lots on Gateway and uh, four lots on Stein Cross and two on Gateway, the assumption would be that the Gateway property would have five ways on Gateway. Now we have Five driveways on Charing Cross, very close to Wellington Street. No room for parking on that side of the street. I had assumed that there were going to be four it's of these real proud There's no parking on this street. No, that was my question. We, we're not going to be parking on that. Yeah. We're not parking on the north That's yeah. side, side of, of Charing the, Cross, right? No. So that increases the vision. I mean, what's the piece increases of the vision? Oh, they're right. Considerably. And the line of sight triangle looks fine. Yeah. For pedestrians. Ours is 15 feet from the center. From the center point. Actually, from the, well, from the, um, the setback. The setback. Each way, yeah. each, on so each leg of the, it. It's yeah. more yeah. than. Intersection, 20 feet. And this is five feet big, longer than this. This is what? Okay. It's if you draw a line, feet. it's 15 feet, and then, you know, on either 15 side. 15 feet back and then you, on yep, each side, yep, both ways. Starting at the lot line, and then okay. you connect them. So yep. and, and this is essentially 40 feet back, right, from the, is it? Well, that's a good point, because there's the driveway, too. Right, yeah. There's an apron there, yeah. Wow, so that should be, that's much different. Oh, but there's a Wait, 20 foot, no, it says 20 feet 20, back from yeah, but the, but the parcel line? Visibility. They're meeting, they're, by more than five feet, it meets our... It meets our vision triangle for uh, intersection, but you're also right with the driveway. It adds to the openness of it. it looks I like never noticed how long these driveways were before. Those are kind of long driveways, but looks like you have close to 45 foot. What, what's no? What's unusual yeah. about the driveway length is that d is the <coughs> distance the sidewalk is from the street. That's what's unusual in this case. Right, where the sidewalk lies in the street is what you're saying. Normally you have an eight foot terrace at most, yeah. and I'm seeing a 23 minus five, so I'm seeing an 18 foot wide terrace. And the ones along Charing Cross are only 22 and a half okay. feet. You know, if a car's, if a parking spot is 18 feet, they're not super. Okay, now we've seen this. Okay. So essentially where the park, where the fence is, if, even if the fence wasn't there, from the, just the building would screen the but same amount. Yes. Point, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Now, if 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 the objection was a solid fence six foot high, um, you know, with kids behind it, um, is is there a safety concern there other than being hit by a car? Or is there just <coughs> assault kind of a safety concern because they're hidden from? The neighborhood, right? but they're not from the other. They're not, not from, from the apartment. I wouldn't think so. Yeah. Wouldn't think so okay, it virtually is on private property. No, because that's essentially a parking lot. Essentially, driveway. Parking lot. And, yeah. and, it's the apartments. Yeah. And originally, when this was two single-family lots, by right, the property owner if could have built a single-family residence with a fence along that lot, lot line up to six feet high. So I'm, I'm going to I'm going to move this uh, along. I'm mm -hmm. going to move it. Uh, move approval of the fence request along the eastern border of the subdivision as a minor SIP. Second. Modification. Second. Okay. Any discussion? I, what the discussion? Yes. I think I think the 20 foot setback needs to be clarified. That it's 20 feet setback from the property line. From the front property of the park building. So it it'll actually be in front of where the garage. Oh, oh, is. Well, I was going to say. I wonder if. I, Backing up from seconding the motion, mm -hmm. should it be from the building? That, that whatever the building is. That, 
is 20 feet? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the driveway is 22 and a half feet, so actually part of the building is in front of where the driveway ends. The front setback is 20 feet. The fence is set back 20 feet. Okay. Yeah. So it's okay. basically That's even with the front, the right. most front. Oh, part of the building. Yeah. Whatever the it cannot front. be beyond the front of the building. Right. Yeah. That, that's right. what we okay. want. Thank you, Tom. Right. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so the motion is to approve this minor SIP modification. And, and the final plan. And? And I, yeah, and that, has, that could be a separate motion. Oh, if you do you want. want to do a separate I motion? I didn't hear No, motion. we can do it together. Did you make it? Okay, no, sorry. No, I, okay. I can't vote. Okay, two. final plan. Let's get it. Okay. With the conditions. Okay. Okay, so all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes. So the next one is uh, certified survey map CSM for uh, LC, LLC and tree troll LLC 1630 and 1690 Aspen Commons. And this is um, creating the CSM. Oh, and Alex is here to talk about it. Do you, I don't know if you want to just explain now. Go ahead, Alex. So why are we doing this? I thought that. Um, yeah, they, they had, I believe, and you correct me if I'm wrong, well, you can. They had condominiumized. No the lot before and now they're taking that back and just I mean it's a separate lot or has been in the past and correct yes yeah, so my name is Alex Rexford with artist REIT and we currently have an option on as this arrangement currently sits we have an option on a portion of the condominium um, with LZ ventures and this entire area was originally formed into a condominium based on the proposed project at that time and how that project would be configured on the site basically they're looking at sharing parking um, between the two uses um, that is since dissolved hasn't happened um, an apartment building has been built on what is proposed as lot one and then we are we have an option with LZ um, to purchase what now will be lot two um, it, so to is to it the parking forward. lot on lot two right now yes there's the, the deck board. Is it a ladder? No, it's just a surface lot. Surface it's lot. kind of a surface okay. lot, yep. So this is the same lot where they were proposed to be a five or six story building, right? Correct, exactly. Okay. Yep. And at that time, this lot wasn't separated from lot number one, I suppose. So. Correct. Had that project moved <coughs> forward, we would have worked, okay. worked through that exercise. Okay, yep. all right. So it makes sense. So, okay. so need a... Any further questions? Move to approve uh, contingent resolution of engineering staff comments. Okay, yeah. and need a second? Second. Any questions? All those in favor of the motion to approve, say aye. 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 Anyone aye. opposed? The motion passes unanimously. We are on to item number nine, which is Pleasant View Road Construction of Preliminary Design Issues. Our consultant is here from the city of All right. Madison. Let's go for it. Fortunately, you didn't have to wait very long. Yeah, nope. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> All good stuff. All right, for Pleasant View, I think we wanted to just go through an update real quick of where we're at, and then we have a couple items that we brought to Public Works Committee a week ago that I want to bring tonight to Planning Commission just to hear preferences. We're not uh, looking for any uh, approvals or recommendations. I mean, they just preferences, I guess, going forward. What would you like me to have up as your design? I would say start with our tech memo. As you start to get to those intersections through there, we'll follow through that, I think. Um, I believe that was in everybody's packet. Yep. yep. Um, we're at the point where probably about 20% through the design. We've started last August, been working through items. Um, where we're getting ready to uh, a public informational meeting on June 28th that'll be here at the council chambers. And so that's our opportunity to kind of bring forward some of the items we've been working on looking at as far as layout. Um, but we've been looking for just preferences um, from the committees and staff here at Middleton. I will say Mark Opitz has been involved in a number we meet monthly on a basis. He's been involved along with um, public work staff with Gary Huth has been involved too. Um, and in all credit, Gary has been more involved than me, I'm aware. Aware, okay. <laughs> and, um, and I, I'm involved as, as necessary, but Gary's the lead for the city. 
So we're at the point where we have a layout alignment through the roadway. We got traffic counts that came a little later than we originally expected, but we needed that information to start looking at what we call intersection control evaluation or IC evaluations is kind of our short term for it. But it's really a question of what should the intersection be controlled, whether it's uh, stop signs, traffic signals, or roundabout type control. And so within the city of Middleton, um, we've got Blackhawk, which really is shared with Madison, but we're looking for preferences here. And then Greenway Boulevard, Quarry, and then finally at Highway 14. And so when we look at these, we take our traffic information and kind of go through an analysis of traffic study to understand what are operations, not only existing conditions today, but 20 years into the future. And those projections are provided by the um, Metropolitan Planning Organization to help us identify movements and turning movements at that point. And so then we look to say, um, from an operation, and they go through what's called a level of service, or, and that's actually graded A through F, so if you're similar to school, it's very just like that, A is good and F is bad. Um, ideally, they say as a minimum, we wanna get level of service D. You look through these, most of these operations will be at level A or B with the different alternatives. Uh, Quarry's a little different in that we'll get to, um, there is some level F as it exists today, um, and the Highway 14 is a little lower, but. You want me to go to any of your slides? Um, yeah, you can if you want to get down into. Well, I, I was trying to help you with the presentation. Yep. Let's page through this till you get to, it will be several pages, but we get to a. Um, the layout, I think that's the yeah. key part. I What's, uh, what, it's going to be a two lane in both directions, urban boulevard. What's the design speed? Design speed would be 40 miles an hour, posted at 35. So we always design for five miles above the posted speed limit. On this section, where this is the existing road? It tends to vary. Uh, the existing road can be one way or the other. A lot of that's layout where a number of constraints along this corridor um, from environmental type issues. We have a cemetery, um, not within Middleton section, but there is uh, the church up at the corner of Old Sauk. What we also have here is a bigger issue for us is the um, Pleasant View Golf Course. Because that's publicly owned, it actually qualifies as Section 4F property. And so we're tasked with minimizing impacts to public recreational lands. Um, we also have here at the very top of the hill, if you will, at the crest of the hill, there's an existing large ATC pole, corner pole there. Um, that's, why to avoid. The <laughs> that's why there's that bend in the as road. As ugly as you can. Bend in the road. Yeah. Let's just tear that down. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll be easy. Um, bury it. Bury it. Yeah. <laughs> bury it. So there's a lot of variations on where that road will shift depending on how it fits into the existing topography. And it generally does follow the existing roadway and probably the roadway is probably centered in that typical section he had up there before. Um, but yes, it is to expand what's now a two lane kind of rural roadway into a four lane divided urban roadway, curb and gutter on both sides, a raised median with curb and gutter in the center. Um, Public Works Committee endorsed the roundabout concepts for the intersections in Middleton, right? Correct. But how do you all reconcile the roundabout with the impact of the golf course? Because wouldn't that have the most impact of any of the? Yeah, it, uh, that is correct. Um, there was discussion. Uh, we had a local, what I call a local officials meeting um, we had several people here, Middleton staff, the mayor was there, um, Jeremy was there from the golf course. And we had some discussion here about this one in particular, as you look here at this picture, which shows a potential roundabout. And yes, it does tend to extend further into the golf course. That's definitely a yeah. How much disadvantage here. How much into the golf course? Um, as you can see kind of in the picture there, it's kind of but in the rough area. The difference there, but we're probably about the edge of the rough. Some of our work, we would not get into the sand traps as you see there. Um, but it definitely does tend to extend further into the golf course than a signalized intersection. And there's no way case. to move that roundabout. There's some ability to tweak roundabouts, to tweak yes. it to It's not gonna go real far, we're, then we're gonna- Would you rather take the parking lot than That's golf course? That's just at golf course. Those are kind of the trade-offs. The problem is you'd have to move the north leg approach you'd have to bring that, you'd have to really adjust that to get over into the parking lot at the southeast corner. 
you, so you would be, um, yeah, yeah. Jen can speak to this just as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to say I'm not sure if I should because the tool that he's, he generates the future traffic with, with is a tool that I oversee in my day job. So I probably should not oh, okay. comment on the discussion. <laughs> well, the point is with roundabout design, I guess Brian, do you know? Yeah, I mean, there's a number of factors in roundabout design approach, and I mean, your goal with roundabout, I mean, in general, roundabout versus a signal, if you will. Um, the big thing about roundabouts is you tend to see slower speeds. Slower speeds generally leads to more safety. Um, I won't say that we have less crashes at a roundabout, but the crashes you do have will be less, less severe. severe. Yeah. severe. Less that's damaging. really the big plus to them. Um, you won't see it in all our cases here, but in general, a roundabout will operate better than a signal as far as level of service operations. I think when we look at one here, there may be an A versus a B. Oh. Um, Do you know Governor, in his wisdom, impose restrictions on roundabouts? Who? The governor. In New in it was the legislature. Yeah, this is local rule. Yeah. Being local here, yeah. I mean, in truth, this is preference here by the community. I mean, that's why we bring it out to, but we also want to bring this to the general public. Yeah. And really, we're looking for feedback from all involved before we make a recommendation. Um, but it is nice for us to understand when we go to the public meeting to have some sense of um, preference by the um, staff and committees within the community. Yeah, I guess I, I gave my preference at that one meeting, but I think other than this green vegetation, I guess I would like traffic light here rather than the roundabout because of the golf course, but the others two are okay, so. And what did Jeremy say Jeremy about the, go um, the roundabout on the golf course? He definitely has some concern for and the fact that there'll be a, what's proposed as a multi-use path along that side and just that concern or liability of golf balls versus pedestrians and bicyclists using that path along that side. He talked about potentially they're looking at planting more trees along that side. We talked some about um, uh, a netting or fencing up along that side. If you actually look in Madison, I think it's along Glenway, they actually do have some netting, but they typically do it right at the um, green itself. Which, which hole is that? Okay. There's a slight You'd be getting a lot of dents on the car. Good thing we approved an auto body repair shop. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, Jeremy did say that. It definitely is the landing spot for most drives and along that. Where's the fence? Does anything hit the cars now on Pleasant View Road? Yes. <laughs> Jeremy Z. Oh, that would be me. Where, where's, yeah, I was going to say. Where's the fence at Glenwood? Can you hit that button? Um, Never done. I think it's up about where you're at there. <laughs> It's along Glenway itself. It's along Glenway itself. It gets a little hidden in some of the trees in which there, but. Um, depends on which driver we want to impact. No. <laughs> golf jokes. Well, I don't know where. Who is now? Well, I'm in the wrong spot. I don't know what I did wrong. Where are you? Well, <laughs> I, I was trying to get to. Uh, does, the does the city have a policy on when to go to. Um, Roundabouts versus signalized. I don't believe we do. That would be in our traffic management plan if we did. I think, and I don't think we have that as a guideline for that. So it's just the a call on a case by case basis. It's going to be <coughs> roundabout keeps traffic, traffic moving more, doesn't it? Yes. You know, That's so I, I would, especially out there, I, I would go with the roundabout Once if we month. could. So what you want? Uh, I definitely. I mean, from my training too, roundabouts are. Much preferred. What was the issue with the farmers' cooperative and the circulation that we raised uh, last time? Yeah, yeah. That, That's um, where we want to get to the end, and that was one of the items that kind of relates to the roundabout. I don't know, Mark, if you want to go to Corey Road, which would be where I was going. Um, so this would be the kind of main north-south road that would go through the Elderberry neighborhood and all that uh, research park. Ag yeah. area west up to Middleton. I mean, if you really think Pleasant View Road in this case becomes a Big major, I mean, it's a principal arterial and it's really going to connect Verona up through Madison mm -hmm. into Middleton. So, I mean, it becomes 
a major north-south route on the west side this of Madison. This is eventually going to go even further south than Mineral Point, right? It's going to go, I mean, it already does. Well, it's being constructed now, the piece from Verona up to where the, um, well, Valley View Road. So That's just all going to be four lanes? Four, That's yes. all going to be four lane, and some even six lanes. Six lanes, yeah. Six lanes? Yeah. Um, I think Epic for that. Huh? I think I do, usually when I have to go to Red and Soccer Park down that area. Yep. Right around PD is six lanes, yeah. Yep. Why, why would you want to? <laughs> <laughs> there so, we go. So, the, Dan, what was the, what was the cir circulation issue here at, at um... We should have that be clear, right? Okay. We just want to make sure that we get that addressed. Yeah. Even Mark, at the microphone, the please. Exhibit. Oh, my God. Oh, there. It was an attachment. Yeah. Yeah, here it is. We're, we're really not opposed to the roundabout necessarily. Can you identify oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Lad Pettit, I'm the general manager at the uh, Middleton Co-op. Uh, and I have my couple of board members with us also. We're not opposed to the roundabout. I, I don't necessarily, it wouldn't be my first choice, but I'm not opposed to it. I'm, I'm more opposed to uh, a, having a, a uh, left turn off of middle or off of Plesby Road into my main parking lot. Um, about 80, 85% of my business comes in off of Pleasant View Road onto. Not having a left turn. Not we, yeah, right, as of right having now. Having the median right, block that. Right. It, right now the median would block and we, we would be looking for uh, an access point. Um, I've also talked to Builders First Choice um, next to us. Uh, and one of the things that Builders. we've considered is looking at possibly a joint driveway so that we would both have a left hand turn off of that. Um, for us to turn, and, and my other concern is with the roundabout, I have no, again, not really a problem with it, is is it big enough for a semi to make a loop on that? Because yeah. it's a 65 foot, I mean, I think a lot of semis are gonna make a complete U-turn and come all the way back down without a left-hand turn. That's our, that's our main concern. Because we have, I, and PPD would be the same, they probably have, because looking out my window, they probably have six to 10 semis pull in a day. We have probably close to that, and I would say you, I call it UBC, but it's builder's first choice. This probably is, has somewhere between eight and ten semis every day yeah. coming into that area. I, I noticed it, though that you have maintained it as a two as a two lane roundabout all the way around, right? That one. Yep, that's correct. And and is the roundabout bigger? It looks is it just the drawing that's a different scale? Probably just the drawing at slightly different. Yeah. Thank you. Drawing at just slightly different scale there. Yeah. Yeah, it came from the exact I same category. I don't think I really understood. <laughs> <laughs> Come back, explain a little bit. Because you were, you were talking, when you say you wanna, you're site. interested in a left hand turn. Trucks are coming in from the, uh, 14. Coming in from 14. Correct. Coming down here, right now, this drawing would, the only access is through the roundabout. Correct. And that's not preferred. Okay, and I just want to understand that. But, yep. but just to elaborate, is the reason for that because you want the trucks to enter your driveway at the north for on-site right circulation, here. right? Right. Uh, our so flow is from... But that's the key. So, But the thing is, a, a, a truck can come from Highway 14, turn around at the roundabout, and then enter your driveway. They could, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm just could. pointing that out. I mean, yep. it's... Okay. That would be a challenge. It will so be. In what would the, from an engineering perspective, what would be the impact <coughs> of having a cut in the median for those That's trucks? Well, the left turn lane. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's customer. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, from an engineering, yeah, from an engineering like if, you, if you put in the cut, it's just you wouldn't a, get it's customers a turning deal. left. Mm -hmm. You'd get back up, though, behind that truck. Wouldn't a good analogy be the Walmart at the south, south Town? Isn't that a good analogy where you come off the highway mm -hmm. and you go south on, what is that, Broadway or South Town Boulevard, whatever, and then you have to go around the roundabout to go back north? I'm, I'm not advocating yep. for it, I'm just yep. making it. That is true, person. that's what you have to yep. do. I would say, in general, just from a spacing guy, right now, Quarry Road's about 1,000 feet from Highway 14. Highway 14, that's going to become a bigger intersection. There's a lot of traffic. We will see some congestion and line up to there. Um, I would say with the roundabout, there's different options here. If you look at the roundabout one, having a median opening there, maybe more of a possibility. If we look at the signalized inner one section there, where his existing driveway is, um, 
I would say it's probably not desirable because it comes right out in the middle where you start your left turn in for Corey. So that right. really is not a desirable situation. And wait, even wait, here, I might. It's not desirable if you have the signalized intersection. Signalized intersection. If you have the signalized intersection, I don't know if we go to that picture. But it can't. Oh, sorry. But if, if you have a signalized intersection and a median, you're really screwed. That's right. That's the worst. Case you'd, ha you'd have worst to have, case scenario, right? You'd there. have to actually have access off a of quarry road. You want to see a back though. And I think if we did the signalized one now, well, the pictures didn't show, and we came with this with right in, right out only on his properties through there and co-built to the north. I was encouraged to hear you say consider a shared driveway because I guess that would be. We kind of recognize the situation and where the traffic comes from when people come into there. Um, provide an opening and some type of median opening in there would be ideal to combine those drivers with pro build and come to a combination there just so we can locate that median Optimate opening north, north. somewhere within that thousand feet yeah. you know in a real space and you got a principal arterial lot of traffic even having you know public street access points ideally probably in my mind would be about a quarter mile apart so that's 1320 feet we're now we're at about a thousand feet as it is with quarry to this site to walk me through that, that if a semi is waiting to turn left, you might back up into the intersection, into the 14? We would provide, like in this case, if it's a signalized intersection, um, ideally we would, a situation where you combine driveways one and two and put that somewhere about in the middle, um, probably a little bit closer to one, but then provide a, a dedicated left turn lane in that median. And so that vehicle waiting to turn left would store in that median okay. and make the turn in. Yeah, yeah boy, I see oh, who's so, happy uh, now. <laughs> uh, what, what, is driveway th what is driveway three? So driveway one is the qual is qual two is the... Yeah, that's just a delivery turn. Right? Yeah. So two kind of lines up now, both two and three, I'm not called pro build also, um, kind of lines up about where their existing driveways are now. So two is about the south side of the building there's an aisle down through their parking lot it kind of lines up three is if you will kind of on the north edge of their building there's a driveway access point back through there it looks more like a delivery i'm not exactly sure what their uses are exactly how they get to it most but. of their deliveries go through three large deliveries the two is basically their retail customers, customers, customers and three is okay. drive-in yep the thought when the other one now we look at another situation the roundabout the one thought was, is, as Mark explained, the ability, in essence, to make a legal and safe U-turn at the roundabout and come back to these driveways um, and not having the median opening in there. The other potential here is an option, too, if we put a median opening in, uh, if they're coming in, is to make it just a left in or left in only. Left in, so right out. Left in, right out. So right in, right out, and a left in through the median, but they wouldn't be able to make a left out of oh. that driveway, out of yeah. driveway one, and go south on Pleasant Street. You'd never do, do you? Typically, our, typically our not needed. Our goal is actually coming back to the south out of Quarry Road. So they're coming in from the driveway three, as we saw before, and they come out to Quarry Road directly south of that. Uh, and for instance, UW provisions, because of how we're set up with our uh, CNG. I mean, like this. And press natural like gas, that. they fill up diesel, then they fill up CNG, and then they drive out, whether they go left or right. Because they're headed that direction. So they, right they come out. in. Come in the driveway, the driveway one, one, and then they come out, then they and go then they Quarry. And then they go out Quarry Road. Right, right. Yeah. And, and that makes sense right. for yep. vehicle of that size. And, and, I, and it really don't, it, for us to come in off of Quarry Road and to fill is fine too, but if they're wanting to go back the other way to turn around in that exit, you'd have to redo your home. Make a semi in there. Yeah. So it looks like things are easier for you, but there may be more difficulty by, for the pro build. Yes, and I've talked to them too. That's why I said I, I talked about a, a possible shared uh, okay. driveway. Put one and two together right at the property line, possibly, and then okay. be able to extend that back. I, I don't. I haven't talked to them specifically about that. It's kind of things that we've been discussing. Okay. And we'll see what uh, they do. Lease the property pro build, so it, mm. it comes back to the leasing company, mm. uh, who is actually UBC's holding company for the oh. lease. Okay. So you'd really have one long turn lane here, one at the roundabout. No, wait. We're gonna have a roundabout here, right? Yes. I know. That's the preference I'm hearing, but. I got a question. 
Yes, my name is Fred Lovberg. I am a board member at the Milton Co-op. One thing I was just kind of wondering, I mean, going through other towns and stuff, have you ever thought about like tree lane, a turn lane in the middle and eliminating the roundabout there? You know, you've seen it like in Cross Plains and Palmetto Street, different t streets where they have just three lanes and a middle lane for a turn lane. Oh, oh left instead, right. of, instead of two lanes and a median. Yes. And two lanes. <laughs> it would have three total lanes. Three total and lanes. the middle lane is a turn lane. Right. Turn left, yeah. That's yeah. more it can for be, uh, I mean, does that work at a design speed of 35? It would work at that design speed. Our traffic volumes here are. It's just a thought. No, we're about 16,000 cars a day here. Mm -hmm. um, so you need two lanes. You need compared. the four lanes. As time we get to the four lanes, mm -hmm. it's debatable about the center turn lane in that case. I would, knowing that we're coming to, to me, it's a major intersection at 14. Mm -hmm. um, it's a thought. It's a mention. It's a thought. But yeah, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. so. So, yeah. so uh, just, just to refresh. A roundabout at Quarry Road, we could still do a median cut on a shared, shared driveway with, shared a, driveway with a left in turn, where we stack them on the turn lane. Yeah, yes. that, would, that median would go narrower and you'd put a turn lane in there. Yep. No, the median would have to be paved because yep. yeah you had opened a left in only turning. opening yep. through the median yep. correct. that would work it would work i'll provide a little bit of caution as people come out of that roundabout they start to accelerate out and you've got a driveway or somebody crossing right there right. It, yeah it's a potential it's certainly a conflict point yep. yeah you've got a potential for but they're not going to get too high a speed because it's not much farther to uh not too much out there but well because they'll be at 14. I was, I was really hoping that we could make that 25 at least through that roundabout and then ramp them up after that because of the congestion of uh P ppd our middleton co-op I'd, I'd love to see the whole thing 14 down to mineral point 25. <laughs> but <laughs> but i would not, but I, I would like that a little i would 25 but that's someday Plus, for me, coming down that hill, and I've driven that a hundred million times, coming down that hill in the wintertime and coming into a, a roundabout, it makes me nervous that there's, I mean, there's how many cars have gone in the ditch right in that area, the, and now you The hill won't be as steep anymore. Right? Yeah, the hill won't be nearly as steep. Well, the there'll be, there'll be, there'll be, there'll be curb and gutter, and not, not, not such a rapid <laughs> fall off. Hold them in the road. Yeah. I'll say, though, his point, though, I mean, there is, generally into a roundabout, <coughs> a roundabout approach, about 3% grade is about the max you want to come in. When we come down the hill, we're actually starting at six and a half percent grade down the hill through here as part of cutting down that hill. When we get to the roundabout, we're probably going to be right at that three percent. So it's going to be uh, on the edge of where you want to be. Going into a roundabout, that's a funny. But that's the same issue even if you put, I mean, eventually if it becomes the biggest thing about this intersection right now, it does not meet traffic signal warrants. Um, and going forward, until there's more development or a future public street the other side, um, I say signalize, and in fact, I'm probably misspoken there because it would still continue to be a stop sign there. It just does not meet um, <coughs> traffic signal warrants at this time. And, and even the 20 years into the future volume, it takes something more to happen out here to push those numbers, to hit that number. It currently stops on at Quarry Road. Quarry Road and um, yeah. you know driveway on the other side at this time. Yep. So Brian, do you think you got enough of input now? I think I've heard enough. I'm okay. Do we want to take a vote? Or I'd be curious recommend? just on the other intersections. Oh, Blackhawk okay. And, and there's also the bike path issue. Yeah, I want to talk oh. one more. It's just about the bike path crossing. Okay, so you want to go through those then? If you guys are still willing to be here another <laughs> 10 minutes. Thank, thank you all. We'll it sounds like thank one you. unresolved question is what happens at the um, um, golf intersection. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are we recommending roundabout or signal? I have a question, and that is it says here 0. 0.4 acres for an impact, whereas yes. the uh, 
roundabout is 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5. Um, 0. 0.4 is the uh, signal. The signal, obviously, but that includes the widening of the road. That so the underlying condition is a 0. 0.4 acre impact. To add the roundabout is another tenth of an acre. Tenth of an acre, which is 4,300 square feet. Exactly. But really, when I measured that, it was kind of between the limits of what the roundabout is versus the signal and kind of set. So I was consistent between how I was looking at what new right of way did we need. The takeaway from it is, yeah, it's a tenth of an acre more of 4,300 square feet for the roundabout. How does access to the golf course work? They would continue at this point on <coughs> the same driveway that's in place. North of the word impacts. Same driveway. I remember when this was yeah, before us last time. I'm like, well, could you realign the driveway? And that, no, you can't, because that would change the whole layout of the. Right. Well, if we're going to put a roundabout in here, anyways. How does this really affect the golf court? I mean, I. Not, it just it's seems less rough. It doesn't affect the fairway or the sand trap, but it affects the buffer to the golf course. Buffer is the distance. It just yep. seems like circulation into the golf course. The traffic is pretty there just seems like it should come off of this roundabout having in an ideal world yeah the entrance to the golf course would come off the roundabout right and it would because That's this is a direct know. link over to the belt line yeah yeah, yeah. when we had that discussion before yeah. I think we all favored <coughs> thought it couldn't happen right the golf course people seem to suggest no, we're, we're, it it's be, a new day. It we're would in a be different in place now. We've right. got new members of the committee, so uh, <laughs> well, that, that 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 to they would have to redesign a lot of the holes, and that would be right. pretty well, expensive. One hole they'd have to work with. Holes. It's not that big a deal. It, it they doesn't made mean it sound it, big. It doesn't create yes. impact. In, they made it sound big. But in the grand scheme of things, when you're designing huh? a road, that's what I was trying to say. Then change one hole. What? Right. right, but if you bend, if you, you know, have the green grow to the, you know, expand to the west, or shift, I should say, shift to the west, yeah. that affects another whole so, plus so thing. So yeah. When we're designing this road for how many years is this design, are we looking at 20 years, 40 years? We'll look at traffic numbers 20 years in the future, but this road's going to be here 50 years. <laughs> 60, yeah. 70, I mean, we'll design bridges for 75 years. <laughs> years. And I'm just saying, this is, if we're going to do something here, this is our opportunity. Yeah. 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 We have to do what's really the best. Mm -hmm. so. And, and, and I, certainly in terms of image for the approach to the golf course, Greenway Boulevard entrance would be much, have much greater impact. Just trying to help them. <laughs> <laughs> because... As you show the plan now, there's a cut in the median, so someone coming north would turn left across traffic into the golf would. course. Yep. Yes. Where they could just zip through that roundabout and be on their way in there. This merely messes things up. Yeah. See, what I have wondered, and how obviously much none of us are golf course the designers, golf. but if you look at the greens, and, and Van, you can tell me, what, like, this is hole number two? Yeah. Lake two, and this is, what, three then? Uh, a word above the word pleasant. That's that's three. So the one up here to the west. My point is, can this area be, you know, can that be Pretty narrowed computer. down a little bit? Yeah. You know, to shift. I, I don't know these things. I mean, it's where a golf course designer has to play. Makes it more challenging. But here's the driveway entrance for people who aren't familiar with how far that is from. Mm -hmm. We can move Greenway Boulevard. I'm kidding. Let's move that north. About eight, nine hundred feet north of Greenway. Yeah, I think you look at some of that lay, you come up a roundabout, you can't, you know, make a quick ninety degree turn. Right. There's gotta be some approach and work into it that well, whatever. No matter how you slice it, there's an impact. <laughs> <laughs> this could go on. 
<laughs> I have been restrained. Okay. And my golf right. course funds. I think uh, you are quite a roundabout happy way to get with there the input. Now. And uh, anybody else who wants to provide more quick input now? Teleport has already recommended a three roundabout. Yeah. Yeah. Did, yeah. yeah. Seems like uh, a vote affirming that would. Yes. I'll, I'll move that we uh, recommend um, roundabouts for those three intersections. Second. Second. Look at on your on your screen. Five A is what Wayne just uh, yeah. mentioned. I think it's a second. Sorry, Dick. I'll, I'll okay. second. So five A is what what Commissioner yep. yep. Berger just mentioned. Okay. So all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes. Now we are on to item number. No, on the golf, uh, the uh, bike. Bike, yeah. Bike. Bike, bike, we bike. Want to bike. bike pass, crossing. Oh, where is that one? Um, Mark's going to. It's still part of this one. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. all right. The question, question is overpass question. versus that green. So That's the really public. the yeah, big ahead. question here is the preference of grade separated with a pedestrian bridge over versus a at grade crossing. Public Works Committee endorsed the grade separated crossing. Yeah. Grade separation. The bridge. At the bridge. Yep. yep. Yeah. Because the hill's coming down. That's gonna yeah, yeah, down. absolutely. I think that sounds good. Yeah. Do you want to? I'll, I'll move that we um, uh, endorse the grade separation for the pedestrian bike path. Second. Okay, any discussion? All those Just to make clear, the, the, the bike path is the bridge, right? Yes, yes. it is. Yeah. Okay, or just yeah. a ramp. And All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone aye. opposed? So you're done now, right? Well, Brian? Okay, aye. 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 do we want a motion about uh, that we also recommend a median cut, I don't know what the term is, for a left turn in a for median farmer. Opening for a median driveway. opening for a shared driveway for, uh, that's my motion, that we also recommend a median o opening for a shared driveway for uh, Middleton, left in for Middleton Co-op and and the other place. Build, what's it? Pro build, is it? Or UBC? Builders First Choice Pro Build. Okay, okay. Pro Build, yeah. yeah. I'll second. Exchange. Okay, so there's a motion is made and there's a second. Any discussion? Second. Just so I'm clear, that's a left in only, correct? Left in only, right. yes. Okay, so all those in favor of this motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes. Anything else? That covers it. Huh? Thank you for waiting. Yeah, thank you, Brian. Thank you. <coughs> okay, um, now we are on to item number 12, and uh, Elder Dan Ramsey has kindly agreed that he would be happy to serve on the bike, pet, and uh, pet bike and uh, transit committee, so I need yeah. a motion. Can it be a... I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Who, Dan? Yeah, yeah, Dan. Can it be a council member? You can for pet bike. You oh. can't for... Oh, no, yeah, for, for pet bike. bike. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, actually, for pet bike, it's always... <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll, I'll move to <laughs> appoint Dan. Well, all right. Now the Mark second. Mark and I can hang out more. <laughs> <laughs> I need a second. <laughs> you sure you want that? Second. second. Okay, I'll go to the motion to oh, yeah. give Dan this chance. Say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So, okay. Now, the this is the appointment uh, to the... Milton Westport joint. We already have Kurt and we already have Leaf and Jennifer has agreed that uh, she would be de delighted to join these gentlemen. So, so. Oh, <laughs> okay. <coughs> okay. Because I, I talked to Wayne earlier and he he might want to be on that too. But oh, I, well, I, I would be glad to I would be glad to step to step off and allowed. And, and that would probably be a separate agenda item. I mean, later. And we can do it later. Meeting. I guess there's the probably. issue of Westport, and uh, you know, I guess I'd like to probably. <coughs> I, mean, I think it has to be because you haven't resigned technically yet. Right, right, no, right, right, right. Yeah, so I mean, we can. I think I may. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm. I'm more than willing to. Unless you just. I end up. Your resignation. <laughs> I end up missing too many of the meetings anyway. No, no we can handle that later. So. so is that okay if we? Because I didn't put it on here because you hadn't. Put right. Okay. I can do it. Yeah. And then. Okay. So well, it does say it. appointment of commission representatives. It does say. Oh, it does say re representatives. Yeah, you're covered. Not to confuse things. I think we have to have to reappoint them every year, don't we? Um, um I think you're on a. Well, yeah. Can I? 
can I resign right now from the Middleton West Board? <laughs> no. Probably you don't have that doesn't have to be submitted to the Planning Commission, so just whisper that in the mic's ear. I'm just kidding. Yeah, on, <laughs> there's a meeting I'm tomorrow sorry. night. It would, it would actually help me because I have to. I'm going to miss the meeting tomorrow night. No, let's not. Uh, let's just go with what we have now. So, so this Gurdie is never uh, lets me resign from that. <laughs> no, I, I guess we will have to go through that step. So, <laughs> right? So we can. Well, the thing is that uh, there's the not a single woman on that commission as of now. Yeah, there is. There is? Cindy Kennedy is on. Cindy Kennedy from the town. There is a one there? Yep. And, Cindy and Kennedy Jen is, is the second one on. So <laughs> how, many, how many people yeah, are? We could do that next time for the next representative. There's, there's six members and there's one, one woman member right now. So and this would make two of them. Yeah, yeah, okay, so Jennifer is going there, right? Okay. Right. Well, right now the motion is for Wayne. But the, if Kurt resigns, there'll be another there'll be another position for the next meeting. We could yeah. I'll yeah. second that Okay. <laughs> well, part of the issue is that would there be any problem because a lot of the things which we'd be dealing with the uh, Westport Commission are dealing with the community of Bishop Bay. That's true. And uh, I would rather not get into that problem right now. So but I think it would be an advantage having someone who lives there and knows the situation. So. I I communicated to um, uh, Mike Davis today forwarded. There's there's language in the um, Community Bishops Bay um, covenants that say that um, residents cannot um, uh, oppose changes to the oh can, can well. Oh, let, let me right. si tell you exactly what the what the it's over there. No, no, but if you're an appointed official, you it says it says that we cannot oppose uh, development as proposed in the general development plan, and the developer may uh, pursue changes to that plan. My my reading of that is that uh, the the issue is we cannot oppose development as proposed, and and should engage in review of changes to that plan. Um, the Middleton Cross, the Middleton um, Westport uh, Joint Planning Co Committee actually re required that that provision be removed from uh, the Westport from the Westport, Westport yeah. properties. But, but the Middleton has not done. And that Middleton yet. has not yet acted on that. I would. We'd like to see some protection for Middleton residents. That um, but I did submit that uh, to Mike. He was having the yep. uh, attorney run by that. And certainly I would be subject to any advice given by the city's attorney in terms of issues that I should or should not vote upon. Bon, I should run the thing so it doesn't have anything related to the entire daycare and the bill I get. Okay, so what I is... I third his nomination. <laughs> so what are we doing now? So We're going to um, vote on... The motion right now is for Wayne, uh, and it was moved by the Mike of the Oh, okay. So any discussion or all those in favor of the motion say aye? Aye. aye. Anyone opposed? So the motion passes. So. Okay, need a motion to adjourn. So, so motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.